If you like all your inspiration in one place, I've got the video for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Project number one is a frosted winter centerpiece. All right, we're gonna start off with some frosty snowy picks, and these are some that I got on clearance last year. These are some Dollar Tree poinsettias. And then I have one of these garland pieces or swag pieces and then some ribbon and some burlap strips and you're gonna make sure when you get this um, mine came from a thrift store but you can use you know whatever you have repurpose something that you're not using anymore you know pull that old stuff off and just go with it I'm flipping it over to make sure everything's flat on the bottom and then flipping well pushing out all of the little pieces kind of to the side here trying to make it balanced so there's the same amount on both sides I'm gonna use this sign from the thrift store to make a base so that this can be easily removed from the table when it's time to eat. I'm going to use some tinsel. Green is good. I didn't have any solid green, so I got this, well, these tinsel looking pipe cleaners, I should say. And I'm going to just glue these down here, and that's how we're going to attach it to the wreath. So nothing falls apart. So after the glue has set up, bend those little ends upward, put it on the table, flip this over, put the bottom of your swag piece down on top of your pipe cleaners and you can just feed those through there um, you can see me poking those through there it's easy to do I started in the middle but you can start on the end if you would like and then work your way down to the other end whatever works best for you so now it's attached we're going to leave those little pipe cleaners sticking out because we're going to add our picks right to those I'm going to put them where I want this centerpiece to be balanced on both sides so I'm trying to make sure that everything is sort of symmetrical on the sides I do have two more picks that I'm going to add in just a moment and you'll see that so that these picks are going to make kind of an X in the middle and I hope this view is okay for you I think you can see everything really well this way you can see it and um, tell what I'm doing and I'm just twisting those in with the same pipe cleaners I already had. Alright, so I'm going to loosen this one up, add another one across here, and then another one across here. So now we have an X and both sides will look exactly the same. They all fit down in that pipe cleaner. Be sure you use the full length. Pipe cleaners do not cut them in half or you will not have enough for this. You could always use something else to attach them down if you'd like. I have some of this burlap ribbon that I am going to cut into four 12 inch pieces. It is wired and that is helpful to know um, because it's going to help us for what we're going to do with it. I'm going to take this, now the top one, that white one came from Hobby Lobby. I got it 50% off in the clearance section and then I got um, that bottom piece that right there that came from Dollar Tree and you can get that pretty much all year round I believe and then we're just gonna stack them and you can put whichever color you want on top you don't have to use the burlap but since I like rustic in my house I want to keep that theme so that everything coordinates from my tree you know to the centerpiece to the wreaths um, any little decor pieces that I have we're gonna start by attaching it just with the branches you just twist your little greenery branches that are under there and you just pinch your what your ribbons and then twist it into that you see how that works and then pull those apart so you can get both colors where you can see them the white and the beige and then we're going to go to the other side wind it in the branches like that and then loop it over onto the other side so if you would like to use a what would that be 12 12 12 and 12 48 inches so two feet of ribbon if you wanted to um, no, four feet I think it would be four feet you know what I mean if you want to use one length of ribbon instead of cutting it into four parts is what I am saying you can certainly do it that way but um, I wanted to do it this way because I save a little bit of ribbon and I'm almost out of that white okay 
Yeah, were y'all shocked when I said I got it from Hobby Lobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I couldn't, I haven't been able to find any white like that, so, and I really wanted it, so it was worth it at 50% off. And the rolls are usually pretty good size. So I'm going to continue down all the way to the end. Now the two tips of these, the outer ends of these are kind of sparse, like those trees that you get at Dollar Tree, have that one long branch on the end. I just folded it back uh, underneath to get rid of that little silly looking sad piece. And now this one is going to be twisted here on the end. Okay, now we're going to take these poinsettias from Dollar Tree. And they look a little sad. You can double them up, which is what I will do here shortly and show you how to do that. Um, just to give it a little more impact. Otherwise, it kind of gets lost in the rest of the greenery, right? You know what I mean? So we're going to fix it so that it, it gets a little more attention. And it almost looks like one flower if you kind of interlace those little petals. Do it however you want. And you don't have to use white. If you're going to use a different color theme, just use different colors. Now, I had some of this frosted fern left from last year, and I think it came from Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that it did. And I thought, you know, this would be a good transition between that evergreen background and the snowy top to put this in here. It's sort of iridescent, it's frosty looking, and it really is pretty. I mean, on its own, it might not look too great, but when you cut it into pieces and then use it as a filler, it looks really nice. What do you think? Do you like that? I think it looks good there. Now, I intentionally left my center open because that's where we're going to put our candles. But this is what we have so far. Okay, so I have a couple little pieces of those ferns left because I'm going to need to use those in just a second. Now, the X on the bottom is going to give us somewhat of a base to put our candles on. They're flameless candles, and that is definitely what you want to use. Safety first. Yeah. I don't want to use regular candles with hurricanes over the top, although you could. But this centerpiece is kind of a quick one to make. It's time for new candles, y'all. So you can see, you just kind of balance them on there. And this is how it looks when it's lit up. And then you can see those little extra gaps there. Just go ahead and use the extra pieces and of greenery and just tuck in there. And no one will even know. Okay, so now this is the overview of what that centerpiece looks like. I think it is beautiful. I think it is rustic and elegant at the same time. And it would look, look absolutely beautiful on a coffee table, uh, a table behind a sofa, or on your table, on your dinner table. What do you think of this one, of this project? I really like it. I'd love it if you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I do two to three videos every single week and I am very active in the comment section so I love talking to you and getting to know you and I'm well on my way to 10,000 subscribers so if you're a viewer and you like this please consider subscribing it really helps me a lot and I appreciate it. Project number two is going to be a lantern and swag. So here's my lantern. It had glass in it, but it was broken, and I took it all apart, got it from the thrift store, cleaned it up. You can see that it's about 20, 24 inches. I'm going to use a variety of picks, same types and colors of what we used in our centerpiece because, you know, we want it to all look similar. A lot of these pieces are just little bits and pieces that I've taken off of projects from last year and the year before, and I keep them. Now I'm going to make some picks. You've seen me do this before. You're just going to add in stuff to kind of beef it up. I'm going to make the top a little bit thicker than the bottom, just for my own purposes. I'm going to zip tie it in the middle, clip it off so that we have a nice little swag here. Typically with the swag, you see that the top is going to be a little bit shorter than the bottom, and the bottom is going to hang down more. You can certainly do this any way that you want to. You'll need a longer swag if your lantern is taller, or you can make it shorter, whatever you like. But you see how I'm inter intertwining those petals? Now that looks like one big poinsettia, just like that. Sometimes you'll have enough room if you have thin enough wires that you could just 
push those in there and you don't even need any glue, which makes it perfect. But if you need some glue and you need to use additional zip ties, go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a black pipe cleaner and kind of weave it up in there so that I will have something to attach it to the top of my black lantern. This way you won't be able to necessarily see that once it's attached. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd love to see you there. More of this white ribbon and we're going to make a bow. Now this is a wired ribbon and it is picking up every little piece of stuff. That's the one bad thing about flocked pieces. They just make such a big mess. We're going to turn this fabric over and over on itself and we're going to have two loops on this end, two loops on this end, and then we're just going to cut it off. We'll make a separate tail so don't be concerned about that. This is about eight inches. Then I'm going to do the same thing only make it just a hair smaller with this. Now the jute doesn't have any wire in it, or not the jute, this burlap, it doesn't have any wire in it, but because we're making it so short, it's going to stand out nicely on its own, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're going to fold this over and over on itself as well, till there are two loops on each side, just the way we did the other one, and cut it off. So you can see here where your center is going to be, just like that. Put your little loose piece on the bottom. We're going to fold over the white piece to give us a line where we need to cut. We're going to cut through the wire and just into the fabric. Okay. Now we're not going to need to do that with, with that burlap because the burlap has already got little notches in the side. It's naturally notched. Take a zip tie, flip it over, and then cinch it up on the back. You can pleat this in your hand if you want. I'll show y'all how to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I just wanted to go ahead and get this little bow done and make it a little bit wider on the top than it is on the bottom. But you can move that around, but I'll show you that at another time. So be sure that you cinch it up where the little clamp thing is on the, the back or the bottom so that you don't see it. Start on the bottom and pull out your little loops. Pull them out and away from each other and you can kind of twist it side to side a little bit and that'll help it stand out. And then go up to your top loop and you can do the same thing there. You can tuck that little extra piece in or you can cut it off. And that's all it is to making that bow. Very simple, very simple. Now for the tails I'm just going to use a long piece of that burlap which already has a little curl in it. I'm going to fray the ends a bit because I want a straight edge here. I'm going to fray just pulling those little pieces off one at a time and then I'm going to make a straight little edge and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just pull some of those little pieces loose and you have a little straight edge just like that. You can just lay that down. It's going to be several inches longer than the white one, and that is fine. We'll pinch that up in the middle, and this is what's going to be our tails. I'm taking a piece of jute that I keep on my work table, and I'm going to tie a few knots in the back so that our tails are attached firmly and nothing comes loose when we fluff. That's simple enough. Leave those ends long because you're going to need to use those pieces to tie onto your little swag piece. I'm just cutting these at a slant. These are actually not going to hang down. I've decided to use these uh, as part of the bow to make it look a little bit bigger and you'll see how we do that once it's attached to the lantern. But for now go ahead and tie your bow on and then you can cut it off. You can see my lantern has a door and we are on the front. Be sure that you are working to the front of your lantern. I'm going to lift up this swag. You can bend that top a little bit so that it will sit right there on the neck and then wrap those pieces of pipe cleaner around to secure them down. Now is the time you can look in there and cut off any little things that don't belong. 
little stems and such and go ahead and fill in the spots that need a little extra. So I had some extra snowy pine cones and I'm just going to add those here and there to fill it out. Go ahead and grab those pieces of fern and tuck them in where they are needed and they'll make a very pretty swag piece. Now I know that this is not long enough for this lantern. I can clearly see that. I'm going to fix it. So you can see I'm just taking the white tails here and just rolling them under with my fingers. And because they're wired, they're going to stay up there pretty nicely. It's just going to make like a little, a little curl. Same thing with that piece of jute on the top. Just made a little curl up there and it looks really cute. Now we're going to use these two pieces, little snowy limbs. And I'm going to be putting one at the top. And then I'm going to put one at the bottom, and that's going to help elongate our piece. So don't panic. You can always add a little something to it. Now we have to fill in the lantern. So I'm going to take a piece of this fabric. Uh, I think it's an automotive section at Dollar Tree. And, excuse my head. I'm just going to fold it and tuck it in there to make a snowy bottom. And then I'm going to use a pick and a couple of battery operated candles to light it up. And this is how it looks. You can always make yours longer, you can add a bigger bow, you can put more ribbon in it. Make it your own. That's what this channel is about, it's making it our own. And that's what I did. And I love it. And it's so cute. It's a very pretty piece and so inexpensive compared to what you would pay in a store for a piece that big. Project number three is our Woodland Snowman. Okay, we're gonna use some flat white paint, spray paint. We're gonna use two pumpkins that were, they're very sad looking. We're gonna take the hardware off the pumpkins and we're gonna repurpose these. I'm gonna sand off that glitter and then you have to be sure that you wipe this down because if you don't, then when you get ready to paint it, it's going to smear black dust all into your paint and you will have a very nasty, dirty looking finish. So I'm just, I just put a little bit of alcohol spray on a paper towel and I'm just wiping it off really well. Then I'm going to put some dowels down on the inside. It's just foam on the inside. Spray paint. Now this is two coats and it's still looks kind of gnarly, but I'm going to be putting some more paint on it so it's not a problem. I'm going to use a utility knife to cut this part of my pumpkin so that when I flip it over and put the other pumpkin on top of it, it will sit flat. Rather than being like having a big gap in it, it's just going to be more secure if we do it that way and it's going to look better, I think. Now I know plenty of people say a snowman has three Parts. He has a bottom, which is the biggest, the center that's a little bit smaller, and then a head on the top. Well, my snowman does not have that. I live in the south, and we're lucky if we get one section. I have a short, squatty little snowman, but I think he's precious in the end. So to attach these pieces, I'm just going to use dowel rods and some hot glue. I think this is the best. I laid it down side by side to make sure that I got it right where it needed to be and made a mark on the other pumpkin because I had to choose what I wanted to be the top and what I wanted to be the bottom. So there, just like that. Now I know exactly where my center is going to be. I hot glued a second stick in there and now it's ready to be painted with my chalk paint. So I'm just using some of my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going over the entire thing. Once it's dry, you can go over it with some adhesive spray and some glitter if you would like that or some fake snow or whatever you want to use for this. I like the matte look and I decided to leave it that way because he's going to have some sparkle anyhow. I'm putting some glue in those holes for where the sticks go and then some all around that area. Try not to get it out where the curve starts because I don't want all that messy glue to be showing. So I'm going to put it back down on those sticks, hold it there, let it dry, and then you can see it sits very nicely and flush. Alright, so I'm taking a variety of picks here. Again, I'm trying to use some of the pieces I already had from my other pieces, and then I have some garland and pit berries, and a little thrifted, I think it's a boxwood wreath, also my white paint, and I have this little ornament. 
Plus I have some, uh, a ribbon that's got jingle bells on it too. So I thought these pieces would be good arms. So I've just got him balanced here, holding him still with some paint bottles. And I'm going to use these branches for arms. Push them in there, trying to get it kind of even. And I think that looks pretty good. And then once his arms are in, it makes it a lot easier to work on him. Okay, so yeah, I think I like them. I'm just going to go ahead and push them all the way down and keep them there. I have those other little willow branches, but I don't think they would show up very nicely. It almost looks like he's a snow angel, doesn't it? Almost looks like wings. Okay. Now, you can use a little wreath like this if you have it. He's not going to have a hat. He's going to have a little wreath on his head because I think he's so cute. And this kind of makes him look a little more angelic as well. But he needs some snow. So I'm going to take that white chalk paint and a chippy brush and just dab it all over the top on the inside and the outside. I'm not looking for a complete coverage here. This is just to look like the snow fell on it. Like the rest of the things that we're using. Look at this gorgeous ribbon I got at the thrift store. It's like a burlap ribbon and it has rusty jingle bells. It's just perfect. Love it. I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom piece and a little bit in between to hold his little scarf and then trim up the little piece here and there. And it makes a great little scarf. Mm hmm. What do you think? So far, so good. He's going to look so much better. Okay, so. I'm going to cut off one of these bells because I know that I want that ornament to go in that spot. I'm going to piece of that, put a piece of that willow branch right there and I'm going to add my bell back just kind of to the side a little bit where you can still see that it is a bell. And I think that's cute. I'm going to attach it down with some hot glue and it does stick very nicely to the burlap. Just trying to center it somewhat. Doesn't have to be perfect. This garland was a pain in the behind. So I would really recommend that you just get some of that scatter that you can get at Dollar Tree that's got all that different stuff in it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Then I'm going to take some of the pit berry after I have glued these pine cones down and just kind of wind it around and around until I get as much coverage as I like. I'm not trying to get it super tight. I like that it's standing up in some places and poking out. My little berries are poking out and I'm totally fine with that. And this is how it looks. Cute. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of it and just put it right down on his little head. You got to hold it there for a minute to make sure that it dries. I really like the coverage of that chalk paint on there made a big difference. All right, so I'm just going to add a pine cone and I'm going to take some of these willow branches that I cut down and I'm just twisting them together. And I'll make two of these little bundles and put them on either side. I know you can't see very good from here, so I'm just going to talk you through it. See there? Just going to tuck it in on that side. We're going to do the same thing with another little bunch on the other side just like that. A little hot glue is going to help you hold those in place. I'm going to cut another one of these in half. And put those right in there also. And then I have a couple of these little twisted pieces of the pit berry that I, you know, wrapped around a pencil. You've seen that before. I'm going to do that on both sides and add another pine cone on the other side of that little rusty bell. I have a snowy boxwood pick. It matches his crown, so I think that it would be look, look pretty nice down here on his little badge, his Merry Christmas sign that he is wearing. Now we're going to pick eyes. We have a variety of beads and pieces that we can use. I think the little wood pieces will work. And wouldn't it be precious if he had a little pine cone nose? Perfect. Look at that. That is perfect. So we're just going to glue everything in place. 
And this is our little snow person. Isn't he sweet? Or a little snow angel could even be. This is how he looks. What do you think? Which one of you these did you like the best? If you enjoyed these, you should go back and watch my most recent video, Winter Wonderland Projects, because that one has a lot of things that are so similar and they'll fit really nicely in together. Okay, we're going to start off with some of this. It's like a burlap ribbon with gold snowflakes on it. It's about six, five or six inches wide. I got another piece of sparkly burlap and then some deco mesh from Dollar Tree. An 18 inch wire wreath. Some pipe cleaners. And first we're just going to go ahead and put this together, get this out of the way, then I'll show you what else we're going to use. We're going to start on the inner two rungs and go to each one of those little jointed pieces in the middle and just wrap it around one or two times to hold that in place. Now you might want to go ahead and jump over that little divider there just to make sure that your pieces don't slide back and forth. If you want to do that, now you can. If not, you can do it once you start placing your materials down. All the way around here. And that was easy enough, right? You might even have an 18 inch wreath that already has the the pipe cleaners on it and that's fine you can use that. Um, this will end up with 18 of these little pipe cleaners. So we're up to the top now and in the center we're going to wrap those around those outside two pieces. And we're going to do that all the way around. You can use florist wire, you can use pipe cleaners, you can use really any color pipe cleaner because it's going to be hidden in the end whatever you have on hand and it's Christmas so I'm using up some of my Christmas materials here. This is my beautiful deer who will be added on here. It's just an ornament that I got at the thrift store. Be sure you follow me on my social media Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay so we've got this deco mesh. You can find this in the Christmas and the fall section and we're gonna lay it right over the top of this ribbon underneath. Then I'm going to kind of bunch it up or kind of accordion pleat it in my hand. going to hold it tightly and go down and find a place to start. I'm starting on the inside because I want that little tail to go inside of my wreath. So I just thought it would be easier to start on the inside section. I'm wrapping that around and you can see how it slides away from it. And that's what I mean there. You'll want to wrap that pipe cleaner kind of around that center bar if you do that now it won't be pulled up or down it'll stay right where you put it tuck your loose ends down and you're going to take a ruler and go down eight inches and just begin to bunch this i started off wanting to make 10 inch segments but i didn't think i was going to have enough ribbon and i was correct so i went ahead and changed it and what you're seeing is me doing little eight inch poofs I'm going to go back and forth all the way down. So here's eight inches. I first went to the outside. Now I'm going to pleat it in my fingers and we're going to go to the inside. Just making sure that I have it on tightly. So then you can see here we're on the inside. Don't worry about the gaps on the outside because those will be covered up. These wreaths always look a little gnarly before they look good, but just trust in the process. Go to the outside, do eight inches, pleat it, and then go to the inside. You're just gonna cross it over back and forth from the outside to the inside. We're gonna zigzag back and forth. I'm gonna leave this in so that you can see see there a couple of twists will hold it down eight more inches okay now once we go all the way around the wreath and we're getting down to our original starting point I'm gonna measure my poof just like we did with the rest of it pinch those pieces together and I'm going to cross over right on top of the original piece that I put down so you can see here and here I'm going to go right back on top of that first section that we put down and just wrap it tightly around. If you do not wrap, wrap these tightly enough, when you begin fluffing them and you're going to have to pull these segments apart, you'll pull them right out of the, out of the frame there and you don't want to do that. So 
save yourself some time and just do it first do it right the first time a little extra effort on the front side end is going to help you in the long run so and there I'm just pressing those tails through there just like so now I wanted to add some of this this is like a mm, it's I don't I can't even tell you it's almost like a plasticky material or some type of a coated fabric mesh that is gold and I thought wow for glam this is gonna be stunning plus there's a lot of highlights in that deer that are bronze and gold and I thought this would really make it look uh, really nice so I'm just going to loop this over back and forth same process start on the outside move inward now the difference here is I'm not gonna use a measuring device on these. What I'm doing is looping them over so that it sits right on top of the other one. If you do that, then the little poof underneath is all you need to help measure. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna go from the inside to the out. You can see me crossing over inside out in the same pattern that I did the ribbon and the deco mesh. And see here, this is where I ran out and I have a gap. So I'll show you what to do. Don't worry, this does happen sometime with wreath making, not a problem. I'm going to take the end of another piece and I'm just going to overlap them like so. Press it into that wire and then twist it tightly down. Now you have a continued length of ribbon. See? No problem. Continuing around and we're almost done here. Once we get back to our starting place, we're going to make sure that it is twisted in tightly and then you can just trim that piece off. You can tuck it under whichever way you want to do it. Now we're going to start pulling these little poofs apart and I'm going to alternate back and forth. I'm using the word alternate a lot. So we have the burlap, the deco mesh, and the gold mesh, right? In that loop. Now we're going to do opposite. We're going to pull to the outside the burlap piece, then the deco mesh, and then the gold. Then we're going to switch back to the original way. You see here, you see the little process. So you can see each color. Continue around just like this. And if you got those wrapped up tightly enough, you should be able to move these with no problem. They'll stay right where they need to stay. Continue around. Fluff them out. You can see what a big difference and how much larger and thicker and more substantial this wreath is already. Just pulling these layers apart. What do you think about these colors? I don't usually do like the gold, but this is really stunning together. I think it looks very elegant. So this is what it looks like when you get it all fluffed. Very pretty. I've chosen some greenery picks here. This is what we'll be using. But we're going to go ahead and cut our ribbons into 9 or 10 inch pieces here. I think I'm doing 10 inches. 9 inches. So because we have 18 and I have three different types, we're going to do 18 pieces of each ribbon. I did run out of that gold mesh up there. So I went ahead and substituted a sheer ribbon that has some gold wire on the edges and you'll see that shortly. Go ahead and dovetail all of your ends to give it a nice beautiful finished look. This is going to give it some texture. I'd also like to add at this point with these ribbons um, it's really good to give yourself a lot of variety in your ribbons. Different textures made of different materials. Wire always helps when, re when you're making a wreath. Um, it's not always necessary if you're using shorter pieces, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So we're going to just layer these together just like you saw me do, like an X and then one in the middle. And then you can move those around and decide which piece you want to be on top, which you want to do in the middle. And I thought maybe that brown and bronze piece looked better in the middle. Kind of separate those two gold pieces. You really won't be able to tell once it's placed down in the wreath though. I'm going to use these handy little clamps that came from Dollar Tree. I use these for wreath making all the time. So here's that other ribbon I was telling you about. It's got the little wired edge. And then here's the original ribbon. So I have nine of each set. And we're just going to alternate them. So you're going to pull it out of the pick. It's just simply 
the little clip just holding it for you until you're able to get it where it needs to go and you're gonna pick your section starting on the outside and you're just going to press it straight down in the center and twist it with a couple of loops then you're gonna have your ribbon bundle right where it needs to be you can fluff it out now you can wait to the end to fluff it you can do a little here a little there whichever way you want to do it as long as it gets done before you hang it up okay so we're alternating now we're taking that other type of bundle and putting it to the inside so all the ones with the sheer will be on the outside all the ones with that gold mesh will be on the inside continue around make sure that you're grabbing all of those pieces that you get them all in there where they need to be you can move that stuff around you know make sure you're finding it and placing it where it should be and look how much more full it is already once it's fluffed up it looks really really nice it is so high end the result of this wreath even shocked me so I hope that you stay to the end and you see this beautiful wreath it's really got me rethinking the whole gold thing don't be concerned about those green pieces they're a different color I like it like that I can tell exactly where I'm going what I'm putting where those tinsel pieces will be wound back down into the frame or cut off whichever way you want to do it I'm going to use mine just as they are to hold down my greenery picks so I'm not going to cut those off I'm going to leave them just like they are continue all the way around fluff everything touch everything move everything around make sure you don't have any folded over pieces because sometimes they get jammed together just want to make it look pretty have intention with everything that you touch on your wreath just continue around I know I'm not completely in in your view there but you get the idea so I'm gonna take these little pieces of greenery picks I'm gonna fold the stem on itself and twist it so that I have a little loop there it just gives me a little something bigger to wrap around my wire so it won't slip out and I don't have to completely gob this thing down with a ton of glue and hot glue can also damage your deco mesh so just keep that in mind okay so we're gonna continue around I think I had like mm, seven of these picks left over I'm just trying to go through my stuff if you have followed me for a while then you have seen my wall of flowers and the amount of stuff I have collected and not used is ridiculousness so I'm trying to go through and use up a lot of things that I already have And we're going to continue around here just twisting and tucking in what we're not going to use because I'm not going to be needing those pieces of tinseled pipe cleaner for anything else on the bottom of this wreath so it's time to tuck those things away and be done with it just going to fluff those in I'm gonna leave three pipe cleaners on the top untouched because I'm gonna need a place to put a bow and I'm not sure where I want it yet now this is a pack of pine cone ornaments that came from Dollar General according to the packaging and my the person who donated all of the supplies to my channel um, this was in that bunch of stuff so I'm using it I'm happy about that I'm glad I'm getting to use those things the 8,000 subscriber winner is aware I've got her address and her package will be going out today on Monday so I'll be happy for her to get that if you've received anything from my channel please let me know that you have received it when you do receive it because I just want to make sure that it gets to you timely and that it does arrive at the right place I'm not a scammer you know I want to help you and I want you to get your supplies quickly so I shipped I ship it quickly to you so just keep that in mind also we're coming up to our 9,000 subscriber giveaway it will be here before you know it because I'm only a few away from 9,000 the goal for me before 2022 is to have 10,000 subscribers so I would love for you to join if you enjoy this channel um, I would love to have you here as part of our family 
moving right along, we're going to work on the bow. So we're going to just flip this bow over, and I'm going to do like a 10 inch bow, and this is so easy. You just flip this. This is just a scrap I had, you know. It, it, maybe after Christmas you're running low on supplies. Go ahead and do what you can for your winter decor. Go ahead and use those pieces. So I'm just going to make a bow with this, just flipping it over, counting my little tails. I know that I want to have uh, two loops on each side, and then of course there'll be little tiny tails that are on there, but they aren't a big deal because you, we're going to trim those down. You can leave them there. You can, you can treat them however you want, but you'll see that in a minute. So here we go. So this is a little over 10 inches. It's 11 inches. Then I'm going to take this sheer striped ribbon that I have been using in the rest of the wreath. I'm going to fold it over. What did I do? 10 inches there. And I'm going to fold that over a few times. I think I end up with like six loops on this one. So fold it over several times. This one does not have any wire in it, but is a very good quality ribbon. I have no idea where it really originated from. I uh, got it at a thrift store, so I do not know. And that's 10 inches. Gonna cut that off, put it aside. And then that Celebrate Holiday, is that a Hobby Lobby ribbon over there? I don't know if that's if that brand is, where does that come from? Or it even could be Target, I don't even know. But I'm just going to use it too. It is wired, it is beautiful snowflakes with gold and bronze and kind of copper. Really, really pretty. And it's on a, like a brown, a rust colored background, gorgeous. Okay. So now that we've got all of our bundles cut, we're just gonna fold this in half and then we're gonna notch it. It's a really thick bow and on really thick bows, the notching helps tremendously. So we're just gonna cut through the wire and just a little bit into the fabric. You can feel it with your scissors when you're cutting. I'm gonna fold this one over. There's no wire, but I still wanna make sure that it is able to be fluffed nicely along with the rest of the layers. So we're just gonna do this for continuation. Folding this in half, we're finding the center, cutting through just a bit there. And then we're going to stack these pieces together. All right, I'll start off with jute. You're gonna see a bobo in just a second. This is why I don't like to use jute with bow making, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're gonna go in the notches. I'm just slipping that straight down into the notches, like so. We're gonna do it with the next set, just like that, and then with the ribbon that is underneath it. Okay, so now you're gonna take your jute and tie it. I suggest a pipe cleaner, because let me show you what's gonna happen when you try to pull it tightly. And this happens a lot. All right, so that first of all, you've got to use your hands and really hold it and try to make your ties without moving your finger, because as soon as you move your finger, it's gonna slip out and it is not gonna be as tight. So this is me attempting to keep it super tight, holding it with my other thumb, trying to move the knot and watch. Oh! But look, I recovered with a zip tie. That's right, a zip tie. Should have used it originally, but I didn't. Okay, so now I'm going to zip that around the middle. It's going to go right in the same notch as that that Judy is underneath it. And then I'm going to clip it off. And you are not going to pull that thing loose. No, sir. So, how we flip the bow is to start on the bottom layers. The thickest bottom layer, we're going to pull those little loops out. This is very thin. You know, I keep saying burlap, but I believe that's like a linen blend. It's, it's thin. It's very pretty, though. It's got just a, a light sprinkling of glitter or iridescence in it. It's really pretty. And you know how we do it from there. Start on the bottom, then you go up to the next row, and then we go to the top. And just pull it apart. Now, this is where you can cut off the little tails that are left, or you can dovetail them like this. You can also cut them at a slant like this. Whichever way you want to do it. There's another little dovetail. Okay. 
If you're enjoying this video, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and it is so very honestly appreciated. Now we're going to start on the tail of the bow. So we're going to use this ruler, which is the 18 inch ruler. And then I'm going to just kind of grab that 18 inch mark and then fold it over on itself. So this is going to give us 36 inches. I will end up trim trimming this in the end, but to begin with, I wanted to make sure I had plenty. I'm going to do it again so with this, so I have two pieces of this uh, snowflake ribbon. And then I'm going to do it again and hit the camera with the gold. And now this one, I only have a tiny piece left, so I'm going to fold it in half, kind of crease it, and then cut right down the crease. So now I'm going to have a ribbon with this pattern. It's easy with this. It's another way to stretch that ribbon. I'm just going to pull it down and then let it overlap in the middle so that it's the same length as the other ribbons on the end. What of that trickery? Did you see that? You can do that too. And then when you cinch it together, it's not going to move. You can trim off the little pieces that are under there. But just be sure that you got it on there really tightly before you do that, or you will pull those two pieces that you put together completely out. So go ahead and cinch it, trim it up, and then this is what your tails are going to look like. We're going to go ahead and add them down. So the middle pipe cleaner on the top, I'm going to go ahead and press that down and twist it around. My little helper's down there to the right. He had his fingers in the screen if you saw that. Now I'm going to trim off these because I don't need it anymore. I could use it for the bow if I wanted to, but I'm going to attach the bow in a different way. You can go ahead and attach all your stuff together before you put it on the wreath if you want, but I didn't do it that way. So you can just weave this since it's made out of wire straight through the back of your bow and now you have a way to attach your bow straight down on the wreath. And this also will let you have the bow up a little bit higher than the wreath level or sink down a little bit deeper into the wreath, whichever one you like. You can just twist that back, fluff that beautiful bow. I think a funky bow would be really pretty on this wreath too. But I didn't have enough wire and it really needs uh, to be wired ribbon for a funky bow. So. I'm just pulling my tails out here and looking to see what I think I want to do because keeping in mind we have to fit that deer in there somewhere. So we need to find a opening and a place where the deer can be seen. So I'm just going to trim up how I think this would look good here and there. And I do like this shorter especially because there's going to be a deer in there and I, I really want him to be noticed in this wreath because you know I'm a rustic girl so I prefer all of my rusticness. And I know that I want him right here. He does have a hole under his chest which I don't show you there but I knew that a dowel rod would fit and that would be a perfect way for me to have him stand in there without gluing him onto anything. So it almost looked like he's leaping through the wreath and the greenery. So I've just poked it down into that wreath form. I just wove it. I know you can't see the bottom and I do apologize for that. So I've put it underneath the top one and then underneath the bottom one. And it's just kind of through the, just poked through there. Then I'm going to use the pipe cleaner and just catch it around both sides so that it doesn't shift back and forth and add some hot glue to keep it still. And there he is leaping in the center of our wreath. Always, always, before you hang it, fluff it, put everything back where you want it to be, do your final critiquing and your final trimming, and then you'll be good to go. So here is my beautiful, elegant, rustic glam wreath. What do you think about this piece? It was quite a bit of work to make this wreath so it is not going to be something that I could just quickly throw in with other crafts. So you get to have this one all by itself in this video. 
Thank you so very much for stopping by and for watching. I appreciate you more than you know. Our family is growing and I could not be more excited okay, about we're that. we're gonna start off with this little glass container. Uh, I think it's a candle holder that came from Dollar Tree. Just a little candle that will fit inside of it. And this is a little battery operated. This is safest. We're gonna use some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel for cleaning. Some paper shreds, wherever you get yours from. And then we're gonna use some of this Hippo Water Slide Decal Paper. After you've selected your image, you are going to use a sealer, just like this. And you're gonna use three coats, drying 10 minutes in between. And we're gonna clean off our glass here so that we have a good, clean surface. No fingerprints, no oils, no dirt. A little paper towel, little alcohol, we'll clean this right up. Gonna do the inside, the outside, take the tag off the bottom. And so this is the one that I have chosen, this little print. And if you go to my Pinterest, which is in my link tree, I do believe, you can choose from a huge variety of free printables. They are not my printables. I didn't make them, but they are just on a board there for you to try. You're gonna put this in water after you've cut it down. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds for this to work. And you'll know because the paper will kind of get a little more um, dull looking and then you'll be able to easily test it by sliding with your fingers and you can see that I'm actually moving that back and forth on that paper. So before you use it, you need to wet the surface that you're using and since I had some water here, I'm just gonna rub a little bit on with my fingers. This is gonna help that image slip around on there so you can get it exactly where you want it. It's wonderful. It's not an adhesive back, so so much easier to use these. You're just gonna hold it in place and then slowly slide the paper backing off. Just like that. Don't worry about the wrinkles because you can easily press those out with your fingers. Just be careful. And just pat it down and get those wrinkles and little bubbles out. Kind of get it positioned where you want it. And then you're gonna pat it with a paper towel. And this is gonna get all the extra water off of it. Very easy, you still have plenty of time to move it around and get it where it needs to be. And this is how it looks. And it does have that kind of a hazy, frosted appearance underneath it. So in order for everything to blend together, I'm gonna to use some of my matte Mod Podge and go on the inside of my container because my decal is still wet, it's still in the process of drying. And I'm gonna go on the inside and just cover the entire inside. I'm gonna use a fluffy brush and use long strokes. Now, I'm gonna have some little strokes in here to make sure I get it where it needs to be. But when I am getting toward the end, it's gonna be long, even strokes so that everything is blended and you get a nice coverage. Just like this. Go all the way around, get the lip. And then when it dries, it's gonna give you a nice, pretty frosted look. I'm just going over the edge because a little bit of that decal was over the top. I could have trimmed it off, but I just decided to Mod Podge over it. Once it is dried, I'm gonna take my paper shreds and stuff them into the bottom. This is going to lift up my candle because the candle is a little short and it's gonna give it I don't know, kind of a rustic snowy look under there. So I'm pressing that down so it's even with the top. You'll be able to see in the end screen how it turns out uh, with a light in, on on the inside. Okay, so the next project is gonna be this little board, this little standing sign that you can get these uh, at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use some chalk paint and I'm gonna paint the first side white with the chalk paint. I'm just putting it on fairly thick and I'm only using one coat. I don't want a solid coverage here because I like rustic and a little bit showing through just gives it kind of an aged look and that's perfect for me. It's perfect for what I'm going for. Once it is dry you're going to print out your next um, picture and you're going to seal it and then you're going to trim it out. So it's a paper backing and it's just a, um, a clear front. It's sort of a frosted looking front not completely glass clear and it's okay to have some of the white showing on these because you're not going to see this you know it's just going to be like an outline but it kind of merges in to the colors that you have around it so whatever paint you choose you're going to be able to see that paint underneath it 
and it helps that it's a chalk paint because it has a matte finish and it makes it a little more kind of disguises your your image a little bit so the same process here I'm going to slip this down in the water let it soak 30 to 60 seconds and I'm just pressing it down I could have put more water in there and they will uncurl on their own um, I've done another video with these um, papers and I'll link that for you you can see here how I'm sliding that paper off you know that it's ready but you gotta wet that surface so I'm just gonna use my mister for this and just spray a little bit and just dab it off I don't know how chalk paint normally does with adding water to it but we're gonna go with it and I don't have any problem at all I've used acrylic and chalk paint underneath and I've had no problem with it no bleeding no smudging off no problem okay since since it's in place now we're just gonna pat it down same process as we did with the glass doing a flat surface is a little bit easier um, just in my opinion but you can do it however you want because there's so much versatility with these um, these decals absolutely love it and the customer service is fantastic so you're just gonna clean that up just like so and then I have a little overhang here which is not a problem I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that off and I did bump the edge but that's all right that is all right I'm not mad about it because I'm gonna go around and sand a little bit so it'll be fine be sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I've got a special surprise for my 7,000 subscriber celebration okay so we're gonna make this a little bit extra of course and we're gonna take some ribbon one of mine is from the big lots uh, last year from the big lots from Big Lots last year on clearance and then the other one is going to be one from Dollar Tree that you can get all year round I'm gonna cut these at five inches and I'm just going to cut three different times so that we have I don't know what is that nine we're gonna have nine pieces of ribbon pretty pretty and we're gonna make like a little stacked bow here hey if you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee see the link in the description box below by the way you guys are spoiling me with coffee oh my gosh and I'm loving it too I love me some pumpkin spice cold brew really any cold brew but it's, since it's getting cold outside I'm gonna be drinking my hot drinks and Christmas is coming so that means peppermint mocha oh yeah okay so you're just gonna crisscross this over just like this and then I'm, you can use a piece of jute to tie the middle and that's what I was going to do but I just decided to go ahead and use another piece of that thinner snowflake ribbon to go on top and tie it off now I'm just gonna loosely tie it here and then adjust where it needs to be adjusted and then pull it tight and once you get it pulled tight you want to put two knots in there so that you don't have any ribbons flying off on you when you're trying to fluff and then you could just move it around these are not wired ribbons obviously so no worries there I'm just looking for placement trying to decide where I want it and I think right on the top would be great this is kind of an unfinished top so I think this is a good place for it it's gonna be convenient too when we work on the back side of the sign so there you go now I'm gonna add just two little pieces of this same pick that I've been using for several projects and we're gonna just put little pieces in here if you buy bigger picks at Dollar Tree or at the thrift store wherever you get them from just remember you can cut things off you can pull them off if they're wired just use some wire cutters and just trim them down that way otherwise lots of picks you can just pull them straight off the branch and they're great for these smaller projects that is so cute look at that I love that I'm gonna put that near my coffee pot I do believe okay so now we're gonna do the next side and I have another one of these it's a little bit larger it's the same as the one that is on our glass candle holder it is so pretty um, I wanted to use it again so now I've got some coordinating pieces but the colors are gonna look good regardless I'm gonna take some of this oatmeal chalk paint you can use whatever color you like it has a little bit of a greenish greenish cast but it's a I don't know how to explain the color you know what oatmeal looks like right with a little bit of green in it okay so we're going to just cover this up just like we did on the other side and I'm just trying to be careful not to get paint everywhere because I don't want it on my bow you could have done this before the embellishments on the top but it was an afterthought so here we go again 
We're going to get that decal ready. Subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this content. I would love to have you as part of the family. Okay, and you can see here that it's slipping now off of there, so it is indeed ready. I'm going to put it back down in the water and just miss this. This is already dried, by the way, and I'm just going to pat it off a tad, and I'm going to add the decal. I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and gently pull down on the paper, and it's going to lay down. So beautiful. I love the colors of this decal against that oatmeal chalk paint. That is just stunningly rustic. I just love this. And there are little cotton pods on that wreath decal. So I think we're going to add a little something on the top to kind of bring that out. I have a cotton pod. You can get these at Dollar Tree. My husband actually bought me a pack of these on Amazon. And I've just cut off the wire and I'm just going to hot glue it down right in the center of the back side of that bow. And we're going to add some more of this greenery. I've cut down these pieces from, they were that longer piece, and then I've just kind of cut them in half and in quarters to give them a little bit of a layered look. You know what we always say, what we crafters say, depth and dimension. We're going to give it some depth and dimension. And it really does make a difference in your projects. It, it gives them a more high-end look, and it gives you a little something, rather than being flat, it gives some interest to your eye. There you go. Our little two-sided sign. And be sure you let that dry. And the package will tell you how long approximately it will take. You can put that anywhere. Follow me on my social media. On Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Now we're going to move on to our next project. On this one, we'll be using the transfer paper for dark fabric. That's the package that we're using. And I've printed out, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And this is what that paper looks like. There's a grid on the back. You're gonna print on the front. I'm gonna use some greenery here. And that's just a scrap of fabric that I've used in other projects. So everything's gonna be nicely coordinated. And then this is an embroidery uh, hoop that I have. And this is my Vivo Home heat press. This is a new item that um, I've recently got and I'm trying out and I'll be doing a separate video on that for you. So I'm going to trace this out so that I can fit it on the inside of that embroidery hoop and on top of my fabric and I'm just going to trim it down so that it looks good um, where I need it. Now you're going to have a white background with this. Just know that there will be a white background on this one. Peel that backing off. Easy. It came off very easily. It's not sticky on the back, so you have a little time to work with it and move it. I'm trying to find pretty much my center here. And I'm counting my stripes. That makes it very convenient and easy. Just going to press it down. I'm going to cover it with my grease-free paper that also comes in your package. Then use my heat press to press it down for the right amount of time. And then it is nicely sealed onto my paper. I do have a little mess here. Maybe I held it down for too long. I'm new to the heat press. We'll have to see. But I'm okay with it. Like I said, rustic, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to find my placement on here so that it is centered. And I'm going to show you when you don't have it centered, because you're going to watch me press it down. You can see here clearly that it's not centered. But because we don't have these screws tightened down all the way, you can pull your fabric while it is in that hoop. And then when you get it where you want it to be, then you can just tighten down the screw and it will be there for a long time. Okay, so it looks pretty much centered to me. Good enough. Go tighten that screw and then we're going to flip it over and cut. You can see me cutting very close to the frame here and holding that fabric up. Now, you can see the scissors are sideways. This makes it easier to get a, a cleaner cut. You don't have all that extra hanging off of there and you can't see it once you've got your item placed where you want it. I'm just going to go all the way around and be careful that you don't cut into your hoop and get a bunch of splinters because I have done that before with some very sharp scissors. Trimmy trim trim all the way around. Okay, 
Now, um, you don't have to glue your frame together if you want to use this for something else then you know don't glue it together but you could certainly glue it if you want it to be permanent now here we go with those picks again we're going to try to decide how you want to place your greenery i've got to have greenery on everything it looks like doesn't it so you can put it on the bottom of your hoop you can put it on the top you can use a round hoop instead if you cannot find an oval I, the oval ones are harder for me to find at the thrift stores but you know whatever you have whatever you like we're just gonna work with it since I have the screw on the side I want to do something to kind of hide that and I think this is a good place to put a swag it gives it a different look and I like it we're gonna take some floral wire and I'm gonna cut that off at a pretty good length here so that I can use it to layer these pieces together you can certainly use zip ties. They're a little more bulky though, but um, totally up to you, whatever you have. And you could also, you know, if you wanted to tie this together with some jute, you could. If you had something that you could just hot glue together, you could. But I find that using wire really holds things together nicely. Okay, so here we just stacked them up. Now I'm going to add this pick that's got some berries on it. And it's actually a fall pick, I believe. But I think it looks great with this. What do you think? You think those look okay? I think they look pretty good. Now I'm going to go around the middle once I get them exactly where they want to, where they need to be, where they want to be. Yes, they want to live there. Okay, now I'm going to twist them. I'm going to twist them tight, turn them around, and then this is where we'll place them. Now I'm going to take my zip tie and put it through the ring back there where the screw is and across the center of this greenery. Now I left a little gap in the greenery here because we're going to make a bow. And I think you'll like this bow. Clip it off. Okay. Now you can do a little fluffing here to put this where you want. Also makes it convenient when you use wire because you can pull these things back and forth. And a good quality greenery, even if it's thrifted, especially if it's thrifted, will do that for you. Okay, so here's some more Dollar Tree ribbon. And I'm going to use about eight inches here just measuring I have a, a little tape down there a little measuring tape on my table and I'm going to make some loops this is easy you're just gonna fold it over on itself several times just fold and fold and fold until we get four loops four layers on each side so there's four and there's four and then I'm gonna turn it around this way and count one two three four and one two three so now there's the fourth one we're gonna cut that off you don't need to leave a tail in it. I'm going to fold it in half to find my center and grab my wire cutters and just cut the wire on the edges. Now you can use scissors for this if you'd like. I'm just using these because it can be done. I'm going to use a piece of jute, put it right into those notches. We're going to slip it into the notches and then just tie this. I'm going to tie it tightly, put a few knots in it so that it stays in place. Now for the fun part we get to flip the bow and then we're gonna flip these pieces out we're gonna pull them away from each other out and give them just a little twist Olivia from Olivia's romantic home calls this the Olivia bow but I have seen this bow done by several different crafters so is there really a name probably not maybe we should call it the notch bow sounds pretty good you cut notches right let's call it the notch bow Okay, so we're going to use that piece of jute that is still on there because we didn't cut it off. And we're just going to tie it around where we've already got everything zip tied down. You can zip tie it if you want. Now I've added some tails but my camera cut out. I've just folded a long piece in half and then put a little hot glue under the bow. Now I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue to just put the bow to hold it a little more stably in place. And then to keep that tail off of the S part of Christmas, I'm just going to put a dot of glue right there. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now use whatever you want to use to hang this up. Keep in mind that it's going to be heavier on the side with the greenery than on the other side. So if you don't want it to hang crooked, you need to be sure that you put a hanger on that can be adjusted or that you know you can pull around from side to side. So here that one is. Pretty? I love it. I think it turned out so nice. Oh my goodness, here we go. I'm going to let you take a look at all of the 
beautiful pieces that we made today while I tell you about something special. I'm so glad that you stuck around to the end because we are having a 7,000 subscriber giveaway. Yay! And Hippo so graciously sent me extras and I am going to be given a package of the transfer paper and a package of the water slide decal paper. We're going to start off with some deco mesh. We're going to be using a little brush and some white chalk paint. I have a little sign here that matches the colors I'll be using. I have a snowflake. You can pretty much get these anywhere this time of year. And I have some little wood ornaments that we're going to be painting. I think one came from a craft store and the other one came from Dollar Tree and then two Dollar Tree white Christmas trees. I'm repurposing those from a swag last year. Some zip ties and some frosted looking picks. They actually look like they have bits of snow on them or ice. Okay, so you can do your swag either way, but for this purpose, I'm going to use like a I think you would call it a teardrop shape. So we're just gonna kind of overlap these to make it a little bit longer, a little bit thicker, but we're gonna leave one, the one is gonna be a couple inches taller than the other one. So you're just gonna put one several inches down lower and then connect them with the tie right around that inner piece. And then fluff these pieces out, and I'm going to get these out of the way so I can put one more tie in there. If you don't, it's going to move around because you can see, see there when I pull them to fluff them out, they just keep trying to move away from each other. So fluff all the pieces out to the sides. We're going to be using these for our deco mesh to hold them in place. All right, so I think this is a good spot for another tie close to the bottom, but in a place that of course will be hidden when we put every everything that we have on top of it. And then I'll just use my cutters here and just trim off those extra pieces in. Throw those in the trash. I know one thing for sure when you're working with this type of stuff it tends to grab on everything these and deco mesh and these little branches um, they just catch on to everything like velcro and they go all over the place you move one piece and everything's moving so you just want to make sure that these are all pulled out straight pine branches are straight so let's pull these all out straight and this will also help us when we're getting ready to place down our deco mesh bundles we can see exactly where we need to put them and then the tip ends a little bit longer. We're gonna be putting something down there later. If you would like to show me some love, it's not required, but always appreciated. You can find the link to buy me a coffee in the description box below. Okay, so I went and added some of this white mesh and it has like a silver running through it. We're gonna take our gray mesh first and this is shorter, a shorter mesh than the other. I think this is eight, inches and the white one is 10 inches I believe but you just need two different sizes to get this effect so I'm going to be using to start the bundle two gray and then two white and I'm just cutting that frayed edge off to give me a nice clean edge and then go up to the 10 and then just cut that off and then this is what the bundles will look like when they're done pretty much be sure you got some clips that you can hold your little bundles together. And I'll show you how we're going to put those together. You're going to take the gray, roll it over about three times, clamp it off, go to the other side, roll it over a couple of times, and then walk the center in. These are called cruffles. The rolled edges are going to be under, just the way I like to do it. I know some people put the rolled part on top. You can do it whichever way you like best. Then we're going to go next to the white piece. Same process here. Roll it under. That catches all those loose ends so you don't have any frayed bits sticking out of your pretty little bundle. And we're just going to scoot them up close side by side and clamp them together. There will be a gray, a white, and then another gray. 
same process. Folding over, walking them together. Okay, and you know here, you can just see I easily flip it over and add it to the bundle. And this keeps everything with the rolled edges on the underside. And that's how I like mine. And they look like this, really cute. Follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Alright, so we're going to start cutting down the picks. I'm going to cut off these pieces. See, it looks like little ice or something on there. In the south, we call that sleet. It's like a mix of snowy rain. I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm looking for the pieces on my pick that have the most of those little icy pieces on them, because we're going to use those pieces. Alright, now we're going to start at the top. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just know that since it's a teardrop shape, I want the biggest, widest part of this on the top. So you can see I just placed it down and twisted the branches around it. Gonna go up here, down just a tad, but beside it, right across from it. I'm trying to decide here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that little stack, place it down inside of there and then hold it tightly and twist the branches around just a little bit. It's going to hold it in place. So this is going to be the widest part of the swag. That's going to be the top. It has the longest branches and it's going to have the widest deco mesh bundle parts. So now we're just going to start angling downward and go back and forth. Now we have five bundles with two gray and one white. So you're going to need to have 10 gray pieces cut and you're going to need five white pieces cut to make each of those bundles. I like to do mine ahead of time so then the assembly is a lot quicker. So you see I went to the right and now I'm going down and to the left. Twist it around just like that. And I've decided not to add any additional ribbon on this wreath. I, well, on the swag, I didn't think that it was necessary for the look that I was going for. And I do know a lot of people just don't care about the bows. They just are not big bow people. So, you know, this may be just the thing for you. Plus, the snowflake is going to light up, y'all. Come on, does it get any better than that? Okay, so you can see here, I tried to get the widest part on the top there, and then it goes a little bit lower down, and you can accomplish that look just by moving around your pieces of deco mesh and your, your branches just a little bit. Look at here. Look who's making an appearance. <gasps> the Grinch. Yes. You're going to be seeing the Grinch and his progress throughout this video. My daughter was helping. She was doing her own thing in the basement, her and my son, while I was doing my crafting. They're little crafters, too. Okay, so now I'm going to use about eight inches here of this jute cord so that I can put a hanger on the back. It's really tight between those two. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling it down and then adding some glue right under it next to that metal piece. And then I'm just tying a little knot here so that we have a loop in the end so that it can be hung just like that. Okay. Now, here is a cork light set, but you can get any type of little really thin line lights like this at Dollar Tree or pretty much anywhere. Okay, here's the Grinch before he had his makeover. This is how he looked originally. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the hanker out of my snowflake because I don't need it. I'm going to add some spackle in there. <gasps> the Grinch is back. All right, and then I'm just going to go around. After my spackle is dry, I'm going to just go around and figure out how I want this wire to be attached. And you can see you can bend it. I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I just bend it around, use a little bit of tape to make sure that it was going to fit nicely on my snowflake. Then I'm going to add dots of glue and just use a little stick. It's like a coffee stir or something. I had a big pack from the thrift store. Um, and I like to use it for these types of projects just to hold things in place and 
to keep me from burning my fingers. This is on my cool temperature on my glue gun. Now to attach the little light switch on the back, I'm going to use some of this double stick. I don't know what. This is tape. It came from Dollar Tree, but I lost the packaging, so I'm not sure what it's called. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to painting the rest of our snowflakes. These are the bigger ones, and all of these snowflakes look different. And I like that because no two snowflakes are alike. Did you know that? It's true. They're like fingerprints. They're different. So, I'm going to take all the hangers off of the ones that were in that pack. I think you can get something similar to this at Walmart. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. But I'm going to use this white, and, then, and I'm kind of using a light hand here, and I'm doing sort of a dry brush technique. I don't want the wood to be completely covered up because my little inspiration piece, which is the big snowflake that goes in the middle, it has some distressing and some some of the same look as what we're doing here on the snowflake. And I just really wanted everything to be cohesive and look similar. So I'll show you how that other snowflake looks. And you can see that they look better like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with each of the snowflakes so that they can all be drying at the same time. This chalk paint is convenient. It dries super fast. There's the Grinch with his hat on. Oh, he needs a little bit of hot glue to fix him, but she's going to work on that. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now we need to put that snowflake on the tree. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner. I'm just going to peel up the little section here because that tape is repositionable. You can move it around. It's sticky, kind of thick, like those little slappy hands that kids like to play with. That's what the texture reminds me of. I'm going to put some hot glue down on that full-size pipe cleaner and then I'm going to press my light switch back on there and just hold it for a minute so that my glue will dry underneath and everything will stay together and not fall off because I'm going to be manipulating the snowflake to get it in this wreath and I don't want anything falling apart. So I'm just going through trying to find a spot that is empty between my deco mesh. I don't want to squish any of my bundles down and distort the shape of my little swag. So rather than wrapping it around the center, I'm just going to go and wrap it around the little branches. This is going to give me an opening to be able to put my hand in there to turn the switch on and off. Because that's the important part, right? We need to be able to turn it on and off. Alrighty. So here are our snowflakes, and they are all dry now. I'm going to take these picks, and I just decided to cut them down shorter. Um, the bottom part of the pick, for some reason, didn't have much on it. I guess that's the way it is when it snows and sleets anyway, doesn't it? The top of the part is what gets the snow. But since we're doing this and we got snowflakes everywhere, I wanted to put lots of sparkly pieces around. So that's what I'm doing. I just cut them down smaller and I'm just going to be adding these throughout wherever they look good. I'm not worried about perfect symmetry here. Just want to get it where it feels right, where it looks right. How many of you actually craft that way? Do you, do you go by how you feel or do you try to go by rules that other people give you? Because I'll tell you right now, if I went by all the rules that other people give me in crafting, I don't think I would have got as far as I have gotten. And I appreciate that uniqueness. It's God-given. And all of us have the ability to do something unique. And we should do that. Because that's the stuff that brings us the joy, you know. Brings us happiness. Gives us a smile when we see it in our home. When we come home and it's hanging on our door. It gives us that smile and that welcome home that we all appreciate and enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my biggest snowflakes and I'm gonna put those in there first. I'm just gonna place them here and there. I wanna be sure that they are touching something when I put the glue in there. You know, just poke it in there 
expect it to stay. You need to have it pressed against uh, some type of framework underneath or another ornament or the picks, you know, so that nothing falls out. I don't want my projects that I work so long and hard on to just, you know, fall apart. I want them to last a while. So you're going to see me just taking the different ones and just placing them here and there. And you can actually give it a little dimension by gluing it right to the back of that star that's already there. You can see here. Just sandwich it between the deco mesh and the bottom of that snowflake. And honestly, if you don't have lights which I feel like you can find them anywhere right now, especially during holiday time. But if you don't have lights, you don't even have to put them on your swag. This, to me, is gorgeous as it is. It's just really not necessary, but it honestly is the icing on the cake. It, it gives such a warm and pretty glow. And you see how nice it looks with a variety of sizes and shapes? I just love it. Okay, so here are the little pieces that look like um, all the leaves have fallen off and, and this is what's left in the wintertime. These little sticks. And they have the same little ice on them, so they need to be added. This is going to give it a little more of a rustic look, which you know I'm all about that rustic life. And it's going to give it a little more size. It's going to make it a little wider, and I like that. Plus it's like a flyaway, you know? Gives you a little more interest. And I think, honestly, it really brings the piece together, having these additional pieces in here. And they all came off the same pick. There were pine cones as well, but I didn't feel like the pine cones were appropriate for this. It would have just overwhelmed it and taken away probably from the snowflakes, and I didn't want that to happen. They need their moment. So you can see, you're just tucking them here and there. And they're very lightweight, so they'll stick to that mesh and not pull anything down. You can do this with the little pitberry vines that you get at Dollar Tree, or any other type of greenery. You know, you could, instead of doing the little sticks, you could use other frosted greenery that you like. Um, the little frosted eucalyptus is really pretty, and you can get that from Dollar Tree. You can use berries instead in these places whatever you want to use. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, the white and silver. I did a, a video uh, recently with a lot of gray and white and it, I just loved it. And when I thought about this snowflake and I knew I wanted to make a swag, I thought these would be beautiful together, really accent each other. So I'm just continuing to go around and you know, it's not important that they're the same size. Nature generally doesn't do things like that, so I'm just kind of following that rule. Just put them here and there, just like God does it, you know? Here and there. Okay, so you remember the long piece at the tip of the tree? We're going to use it to hang the sign. And look when we turn the lights on. <gasps> oh my goodness, the magic. I love this. You could take more lights if you wanted to and go all the way through your swag. But this brings a lot of attention to that middle piece and I like that. So here we are. And I've went ahead and done two different backdrops for you for this swag just so you can see the difference. It mixes well with any other color scheme pretty much because it's white and silver and you know but also I've put it on a different backdrop so that you could see that it looks really good with gray if you want to do some type of a neutral look see this is a more warm backdrop it's more woody and natural colored look how pretty oh I love this and then here it is with the gray, so you can see how nice it looks with that as well. You can still see some of the wood tones in the snowflakes, which I think makes it a little more versatile as far as um, color schemes in your house and whether or not you want to do it. And you could use a different color sign on the bottom 
other than peace on earth and the gray and white like I did, you could use something different there. Or you don't have to do anything at all on the bottom if you don't want to. Number one is going to be a little deer snow globe. This is so adorable. I got these ideas walking through, I think it was Bath and Body Works. So you can see all the supplies we're going to be using. I've got some picks. These are little salt and pepper shakers. Little deer. I have a little stuffed snowman with the little fur. And these jars came from Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? These canisters, they're really, really good. Hopefully you can find these at your store. There's a larger one and a smaller one. And in just a second, I'm going to measure these for you. Just to give you an idea, in case you don't find these, you can get a container that's close to that. I started off by looking for the little fish bowls, but I couldn't find them, so this is even better. Then I have some of this little miniature greenery stuff and some snow and a glass plate. And that also came from Dollar Tree. My kids are stomping around upstairs. As soon as I say I'm doing a voiceover, everybody get quiet. Everybody runs for the hills. Okay, so I'm going to use this satin nickel spray paint and do the plate and both of these tops. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to take this sheet of styrofoam and it's about the same depth as the neck of my jar, so it's perfect. And I got that from the thrift store. I'm just going to press down. I don't want to have to guess here. I want it to be a nice snug fit because I don't want to have to glue this in. And I'm just going to press down with both until I get to my tabletop. And I started off by using my metal ruler here just to kind of score it, cut some little lines in here so it would be easier to work with the pieces one at a time. Works really well for cutting things. And then I started by taking my ruler and just kind of cutting down in there and then decided just to go up and down all around to get my circular shape. This is really easy to do. You can use whatever you want to use, but I had already cut my thumb. I did not want to have to get out a blade or anything else like that. Okay, so once it is popped out of its form there, you're just going to rub off the little edges. They'll be kind of fraying. And then we're going to cover those with a sheet of this faux, it's like a snow fabric or a batting material. But I got it a long time ago to use for my little snow village, my little winter village. So this is going to stick pretty well without any glue, so you really wouldn't have to use it. But just for security reasons, I went ahead and opened mine back up, sprayed a little bit, and then glue, put them back down in the same shape. Now be sure that you have windows open, doors open, a fan going, or that you do this outside in a well-ventilated space. Now I'm going to put some on the top of these as well and take some of that snow. You can get it like a white, which is what I have. Or if you prefer, you can get it in like an iridescent. And that's really nice too. I didn't use my salt and snowflake mixture this time because I didn't want to have to deal with the, the mess of it. Plus, I don't have to have this in any type of a thickness. So this works best. All right, I'm just sorting through to see what I want to use. And I do have this pick that came off of something... I think from last year and then so I've just cut it down and stuck it in the back and I know that I want my little deer to go right there so I'm gonna hot glue him on the bottom it doesn't have shiny surface on the edges so that's where you want to put your glue and it will stick down without coming off that's my experience anyway and then another little pine pick I'm putting over here because I want it to look like he is in the woods deer like to bed down and and be in a secure hidden spot so I'm trying to kind of make him feel comfortable right there in his little home so these little picks are really nice I think when we grew up we call the tree a popcorn tree because the little seed pod would pop open like popcorn pops so I think that's what these little white pieces are that's what it reminds me of anyway but they also kind of put you in the mind of a flower and they're snowy so I just I love the texture and the interest that it gives to this piece I'm going to take some of my little snowy pine cones and just put them here and there, just like if you were doing an arrangement, you know, like a floral arrangement. Just put them in there and protect your fingers. You can definitely use your little silicone finger protectors for that. Um, I do have an Amazon storefront, so if there's anything in my video that you need to learn about or know about, you can look it up on my Amazon store, and it is in my description box. 
so far so good i'm liking my little deer don't be concerned with the little holes in his head because we are going to fix that it's not going to be a problem i'm going to do something really cool with that and then you're just going to continue to put them around i, I pick it up and put it down and, and look to see what i need to go where and just like when we're doing wreaths and arrangements pick it up look at it from all angles and decide what needs to go where i do that quite a lot isn't he cute if you want to buy me a coffee do you know that you can certainly do that the links in the description box below thank you all right just add them in here and there make sure that you do not go past the edges of your little cap because you're going to have to squeeze the little surface here back into the jar so you don't want to extend past your edges leave everything in the center on the top okay so this these little berries came off of the little garland the little pitberry garland whatever and you can pull them off the wire and cut them and i decided to use these to make him look like a little buck when when uh, deer or babies when they get older obviously they start to grow little nubs on their head before they become horns so now we have a little nub and buck isn't he cute project number two is the snowman snow globe i will assemble both of these globes after we get done with the little snowman so i'm going to take a piece of this wire that i already had um, it came off of a floral pick that i used before and i'm going to take the skinny wire part and just poke it right into the fabric we have to have a way to secure this snowman and make sure he doesn't pop off of our little base when we put him together so i'm just doing the same thing on both sides putting the wire side down first trim it down so he's got some little stilts and then press it straight through the fabric it's really easy to puncture through that fabric by the way no worries about that okay so he's down and now we need to add some hot glue underneath and while i have him because his bottom is so uh thick and so um round i have to put quite a bit of glue and then hold him down there till he's completely dry again with the pitberry garland i'm going to make a little circle with a couple of loops and we're going to put put it down over his arms making sure again that it stays on that base and does not go off of the base and I'm going to put that down at his feet and then we're going to make almost like a little wreath circle to go around him so I'm just going to lay these pine cones one at a time all in the same direction all the way around just like this so you can see the little pit berries sticking out underneath I like them they look snowy to me it looks perfect just gonna go around and around here stay tuned because later on we have information about the 8,000 subscriber giveaway it's coming up you don't want to miss it okay so we're gonna continue around just like this until the circle is complete you can use anything you want to use here you can use little iridescent pom-poms to look like snowballs or just anything you want and so that part is finished I like it and I'm gonna add two of these little trees and these are just little white trees that you can get at Dollar Tree or at Target um, bullseyes playground whatever and you can just cut them because they're on wire so you can make make them smaller if you would like and I've used a larger one and a smaller one and then I'm going to twist around just a little dowel rod that I have here to make a little twisty like a snowy branch I'm going to add some hot glue and tuck that right inside behind the tree and it's going to stand up right by his little hands or his little arms. Cute. They almost look like a little heart, don't they, on the top. And again, just kind of looking all the way around to see what else I want to add. I'm going to add one more right to the front, right behind the trees and on top of the pine cones. And he is just too precious. It might be a she who knows she's liking her fur coat and her little fur wrap there now i'm going to disassemble this because i need two wood discs so i'm just going to take this apart and then i'm going to spray paint them with the same paint be sure to follow me on my social media okay so now we have to assemble everything with our snow globes and i'm just trying to get an idea of what pieces i want to go where 
And I know that I want the top to actually be the bottom now. So I'm going to start by taking my small jar and the deer, who is smaller, and I'm just going to press it up into the neck or the mouth of that jar. Press it, press it, press it. And I do have one of my branch tips a little bit bent over, but I am not bothered by that one little bit. Everything doesn't grow straight in nature, so who knows how it would have gone if it would have just been plunked down by the wind. So there you go. Very cute. Now we need to cover the top. We don't want that to show. and It's got a dimple in it like the bottom of a jar normally has. And it's kind of ugly. We're going to need to cover that up. Plus, if it's going to be a candle holder, we need a flat surface to put there. So we're going to go around with a little bit of fix-all glue and the hot glue in between. You got to work really quick after you put the hot glue on because it dries fast on glass and on metal. And there you go. This is going to be our top and our bottom, and I think it looks great. Now we're going to take some of this trim. It's kind of fuzzy, sparkly little rope trim. And then I'm going to cut a piece of greenery down. It's just cutting off little pieces so I have something to grab onto with the rope. Just trimming it. Now I have a little stem to attach it. And I can put it right underneath that knot. Put a little bit of hot glue there to make sure nothing comes off. And then I can just tie it in there. I don't want anything to fall apart. Y'all, I swear I don't have ghosts in my house. What you hear above is my kids. Okay, so there we go. I'm tying this down. Very simple. You could hot glue it if you wanted to. And you could certainly use a different type. You could use jute or anything you want on the top. But I thought this would be appropriate for Winter Wonderland because it's sparkly. So now we have one piece of our pick. I'm going to add another one of these little pods. And I'm going to add another little pine cone. Just like that. Isn't he adorable? I love it. All right, now it's time for the snowman. We're gonna put him in carefully, making sure you get his arms in there because the mouth of the jar is the smallest diameter. So I'm just tucking as we go along. He fit in nicely. Got plenty of room there. Always check before to make sure that your items are gonna fit. So just, you know, check it out first. Now I'm just gonna press it in Screw that lid down nicely. And when you flip it back over, this is how this one looks. You can put extra snow in if you want to, but I did not need it for mine. I like it like this, and the one at Bath & Body Works did not have loose snow in it either. Alright, so I'm taking that plate. It is upside down, and I am placing the bottom of the jar, which is now the top, right on top. Give it time to dry. So I'm trying to support that that plate on there to make sure nothing happens and I'm going to add a wooden disc on the bottom of this one well it will be the bottom now just to make sure that both of my items looked you know like a pair I'm gonna take the rest of that little piece of rope and go around right in the center right around where the little crack is between those and a little bit of glue here and there just to make sure it doesn't move And instead of tying this off, I'm just going to make it just loop around and that's all. I've got some really pretty, this is like a metallic looking, almost like a ladder that I'm going to add right underneath the plate at the top of this jar because I want to add something else and I need something to adhere the two things together to hold it, make it a little more stable. So when you glue to glass, it can be difficult. Things like to pop off. So I'm going to go all the way around with a little bit of glue so that I don't make a mess. Glue a little bit onto the plate, a little bit onto the jar or the canister and just keep going around just like that. Now it's going to cut off in a minute, but don't be concerned because I promise you at the end of the video, you're going to see the full effect. You'll be able to see it for what it is in the end. Okay, so I'm going to continue around. And this is how it looks, and you could certainly leave it this way. But I got these icicle garlands at the thrift store, and I thought, you know what? What a perfect place to put these. So now, the hot glue on the ribbon will hold these little plastic icicles nicely in place. 
and you can certainly use Gorilla Glue or whatever type of adhesive that you like. Be sure you subscribe if you're enjoying this video. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family and my journey to 10,000 subscribers. All right, so here are the rules. You gotta watch the video and put I want it in the comment section. Project number three, snow place like home wreath. We're gonna start off with this wagon wheel wreath, which was originally from Dollar General several years ago. And I took all the picks off so I could use it again. I've got new picks and I've got these little metal trees, um, <laughs> houses rather, from Dollar Tree. And they come in three different colors. So you can use whatever you like but I like the, the metal for this wreath. Cut your picks apart because we're gonna make new picks. Got two little picks that came from Dollar Tree with a couple little things on it and I'm gonna beef them up. So I'm gonna add some white eucalyptus to it and I'm gonna add another greenery pick with some frost on it and I'm just gonna use these pipe cleaners to hold them together. You can use floral wire, you can use floral tape, zip ties, whatever you wanna use. I'm going to make several of them that are somewhat similar and then I think I made two of those and then I'm going to make a few more that are a little bit different and you'll see those as well. Okay, see those? And then we're going to wrap these together little bit different but it's all in the same theme everything is going to match nicely together you can bend them out they are mostly on wire so just bend them make them look how you want nothing needs to lay flat and then start placing them around where you think you might want them I always do this first I don't always leave it in the video but I always lay them down first to decide what is most pleasing to my eye and you know it's going to be different for everybody you know, everybody's gonna like something different and that is fine. Your crafts and creations are yours. They bring you joy. No one can tell you that it's not right. You don't need approval, is what I'm saying. Be confident. Do it with joy in your heart and be confident. Okay, so I'm just using zip ties here, but you can use, you've seen me use floral wire to do this too. You could certainly use hot glue if you wanted because this is just like a MDF wheel. Whichever way you want to do it will work fine. I'm just kind of overlapping them where you can't see the stems from the previous one. You want it to be nice and full. Then move your picks around where they look nice. And then, so you can, we're alternating. So I had one of the thinner picks, then one of the thicker ones with the pine cones, then a thinner one. Then we're going to do the thicker pick with a pine cone in it, just like that. So my goal, in case you were wondering, is to be at 10,000 subscribers before I get to 2022. So I am well on my way, but I still need a little over 50 subscribers a day in order to get that goal. And that's just an average. So I am asking that if you enjoy my videos, if you're already a viewer, I would love for you to subscribe and join this family. There's my son's hands. He's all into it too. He's putting the winter ma magic in here. He didn't want me to cut it out of the video either. But I would love to have you. I really would love to have you. We have so much fun. I'm always in the comment section responding, you know, answering questions and just talking. I love to talk to y'all. I love to get your input. And so many people leave tips, which is great because it helps us all. So be sure you read the comment section, you know, if you're a subscriber or if you're a viewer who is considering subscribing. Okay, so now it's time to put the pieces down and I'm gonna do it just like this you can put your houses on here any way you want to but I'm trying to get mine centered in an area where the back is open so that I can put my little flickering flameless candles inside so I'm trying to leave a space in there where I can get those pieces back on the inside so just like this I'm gluing it down and don't worry if you make a mess you know just put something underneath your surface because sometimes you know you put glue where it doesn't need to be and it's dripping on the table it's okay it's just crafting it's supposed to get a little messy right 
So press them on down there and then add in your pieces of greenery in the additional spots that you want them. You're not going to see the end of this clip either because for some reason it disappeared on me. But uh, definitely, definitely stay tuned to the end because you will see what it looks like all together. I'm just adding in some more greenery and then I'm going to add some of those little Christmas trees just like this around the houses. Okay, so here's our reveal. Look at these pieces. Oh my goodness. I am so happy with the way these turned out. And this candle was from a previous video. And I just put it on top. But look at this. Aren't they cute? See the little flickering lights on the inside? I love this piece. And I'm so glad I didn't lose the footage of the full wreath. So here is this candle, our little snow globe with the candle on top. Definitely use flameless candles. It's just the safest thing to do. So be sure that you comment now, I want it, down in the comment section to be entered for a chance to win the box. This is a 8,000 subscriber giveaway box and it is full of crafting tools of from Dollar Tree and some other stuff that I had that is so new. I'm going to start off with the first project. This is going to be some framed, a framed bag. We're going to use some wood tint, some paper towels, a chip brush, or whatever type of brush you like to use with your stains or tints. I'm going to use a thrifted 12 by 12 frame. I'm just going to pop the back out. It doesn't have any glass in it. This is a Michaels bag, and I'm going to be cutting Santa out. He's so cute. I love this vintage look for this little Santa, his little sweet face. Now I'm going to try to cut off as much of that green as I can. So I'm going to try to get as close to the red as possible because I don't want to have any of that left on there. And this is how it looks. Okay, so you can see the difference. If you put a white paper behind it, you see how much whiter that looks? And then, see there? So I want it... I want it to have a white backing instead of having it against cardboard because that'll make it look more dull. I'm going to use my glue stick. You can use any type that you like, any brand, and just go over this entire bag. The bag is like a fabric mesh on the back. It's kind of a strange texture. So once I get it down, I'm going to take my little tool that came from plaid and I'm going to press this all down. Just going to see where the bottom is, flip it over, and cut that off. And then I'm going to fussy cut around Santa one more time to get a nice clean edge so that we have none of that white showing. Its only purpose is to brighten up the background. Now from Dollar Tree, you can get some of these pieces of wallpaper, wallpaper panel, whatever they call it. I'm going to put my backing back there again so I can get an idea of how much I want to use and just using some clips I'm holding it in place while I cut off the excess on the bottom. It doesn't have to be the exact size of the backing because Santa is going to be covering that up. Now on these pages you fold it over and peel the back off. Just that first strip is how I start. Then I try to get my strip right on top of the surface and press it down carefully so that I know that I don't have any crooked lines. Just making sure there's no bubbles. And then you're gonna peel a little bit up from the back, flip it back over. And then I like to use a wooden ruler because it won't cut your, your wallpaper there. And just kind of shimmy it back and forth, back and forth all along that as you slowly peel the back end off and lay the adhesive side down and it's gonna give you a nice smooth finish. Just like that. And then we're gonna put Santa right on top of it. I like that Santa has the little wood paneled background. I think that looks really cute. I'm gonna use some of my Mod Podge. Thank you, Plaid, for sending me so many goodies. I am an ambassador, so I get to try out all kinds of items from them. I'm going to use my brush and go all the way to the edges and neatly in pretty much one layer 
cover it all up and then we're going to lay it down line it up and press it down i'm going to hold on to it so it won't slide anywhere and then just work the bubbles out and if you have any spots that aren't stuck all the way down just go back in there like his mustache and the edge of his coat and just lay that down so far so good we're going to put santa aside and let him dry i'm going to pull the tabs out of the back and we're going to work on the frame this is just raw wood and I'm going to use some of this gray tint, again, from Plaid. It's a folk art product. I love these. These do not smell like stain. They dry very fast. They're like a water base and uh, fairly easy to clean up. Now, the darker colors will, will stain, so you have to be careful and protect your surface, which is what I have done here. And then you're just going to go all the way around. Be sure you get the inside of the frame and all those surfaces. And you're going to grab up a wad of paper towels or an old rag and just start rubbing off every bit of the excess on the inside, on the sides, and on the flat surfaces. So after it's dried and Santa is dry, I'm going to put him back down in the frame. I'm going to use some of this tacky glue and just go here and there in like a dotted line. And then I'm going to go in in between those lines with some lines of hot glue. So it'll stick down quickly and then it'll stick down for longer just like that you can just use hot glue if you want to here however you want to do it then I'm just going to use some lightweight wood blocks here just to hold it down to make sure that nothing comes up I'm going to give it some time to dry and then once it's all dry this is how Santa in the frame looks now it's time to embellish so I made this string of beads on a Valentine's product um, project last year in 2020 and I took it off and I'm using it again this year in the Christmas, and I like it. This is a little thrifted bobble. It's like an ornament of some type, and it has a hole in the top. I'm going to take a little white piece of pipe cleaner, loop it around my little beaded piece up there, add some hot glue into the hole, and then I'm just going to place those two pieces of pipe cleaner right down in there, and it fits perfectly. And to embellish that, we're going to use just a little piece of pick that came off of something else. I'm going to cut it into two little pieces and make sort of a garland for the top of it. I'm going to put it right there on that loop and then give it a minute to dry. And I think I want to add a little bow to it. So I'm just using some of this gingham red and white uh, thrifted ribbon that I have. And I'm going to pull this down to make it really tiny. Then I'm going to trim little edges at a slant. And put it right there over my greenery. So I wanted to add one more thing on here and had a snowflake left from my light up snowflake swag. Which you definitely need to watch that if you haven't seen it yet. And I'm just going to add it right there and I think it gives a perfect little finish. What do you think about this project? Isn't he sweet? I think it's perfectly vintage and rustic. Then you can just put whatever type of hanger on the back you want. Moving on to the next project, we're gonna work on this beautiful yardstick swag. I won't be using a yardstick though, you'll see what I use. So I'm gonna use some long deco mesh, some shorter deco mesh. I'm gonna use white and red. I'm going to be using, I don't use that silver that's to the side. I've got some bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. I've got some Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and thrifted ribbon. I've got some of these little ornaments that all came from Goodwill. Aren't they sweet? And then this one. And here's a Santa that I got at the thrift store, but you can get them similar. I think he has glasses at Dollar Tree. And then here's the little pick. This is a stake that came off of some type of a yard stake that I had. It is about 24 inches long, 20, 24 inches, something like that. And we're gonna use some pipe cleaners. And this is how we're gonna attach our deco mesh to the stick. So you're just gonna wrap one around the top. It's about an inch down, tightly, and then a little dot of hot glue so it doesn't slip on you. Then we're gonna go down four or five inches, depending on what you wanna do. And we're going to wrap 
one to each side. So wrap it in the middle and press one off to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing right over the top or right under or above it and go right to the side. We're gonna go down the same amount of distance, one in the middle, a little bit of glue to hold these down. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you certainly can to show me some love. The link is in the description box below. We're going to continue all the way down just like this until we get to the bottom. And on the bottom, we're going to do two pieces and then you'll be a little space there. Be sure that you get your hot glue on the bottom one for certain or it will fall off when you try to make your loop on the end. And you'll see what I mean when I start adding on my deco mesh. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna take all the little hangers off of my ornaments also. Should have mentioned that earlier, but there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this very wide deco mesh. I think it's a 20 inch. I'm just gonna kind of gather it into my hand. This is a scrap that I got from the thrift store and it is, um, I knew that it wouldn't be enough to do too much with, but it's perfect for these swags. Good for scraps. I'm just going to place it down and wrap it around. Just like that. I'm going to go down, make a little poof, kind of tucking my edges under. See the little poof there? We're going to take a little ruler until you can learn how to eyeball this. And we're going to do 10 inch poofs. So there we go. It's going to go to the outside. Just gonna push it down into the center and then twist it. You can use your finger or your knuckles or whatever to hold it in place. Because deco mesh can kind of be frustrating and unruly, especially when you use the big spools like this. It gets kind of crazy and it catches on all of the pipe cleaners and drags across your table. It's just potentially a big mess. Going down another 10 inches and we're gonna go back to the center. Poof it up. Put it in the center. Okay, we're gonna go to the side again. We're gonna work all on one side and then after we go to the bottom, we'll loop back up and start on the other side. So there we are in the middle and then back to the outside. All right, the bottom, same thing, 10 inch poof, but you're just gonna loop it around and put it right in the one on the other side. 10 inch poof to the center. It's going to overlap the other one you have there. Give lots of volume. 10 inch loop on the side. Make another one. There we go. All the way around until you get back where you started from. I'm just kind of adjusting here. I tucked my tail up too much. It gets really wound tightly when it gets next to the spool. So I'm just showing you how I pulled that out. Kind of fluff it around and make sure that it's tucked in and then wrap it around right there okay so now we're going to add the red and this is our dollar tree mesh i think it's eight inches maybe eight inches all right gonna tuck that inside toward the middle just like we did with the white one so that it's not sticking up on the outside it'll all be hidden under the little poofs and we're gonna do the same process here. We're gonna take about 10 inches. We're gonna start on the side, whichever side you want. This time I'm starting on the right. Before I did the left, it makes no difference one way or the other. Make your poof, find your center point, which is what I'm doing now. And it gets difficult once it starts getting kind of um, fluffy here. It, it gets kind of uh, challenging, but you just keep going. You can find them if you, if it would help you to use a different color like the red and white pipe cleaner so that you can find it easily, go ahead and do it that way. Whatever works for you because you won't see those pipe cleaners in the end. So I'm going to keep going around. Same process. Go to the side, go over to the center, go back to the side, go over to the center until you are at the bottom wherein you will make a loop just like we did before. I didn't want to edit this all out because I feel like some people need a little more visual. So that's what I'm giving you here. So we're looping it across the bottom just like we did before and going into the other side. Just like that. 
continue along and it makes a beautiful slightly crisscross pattern um, it's not as noticeable once you get all of your little elements onto here but I think it's a pretty look we're back at the top and it took almost one whole roll of the Dollar Tree Dicka Mesh you can change your mesh colors depending on what you have, depending on what kind of decorations you want to put on it. But I really like the idea of using that bluish green color and red and white for my vintage uh, projects. And I'm just fluffing it out, moving that around where I want it. Now we're going to take this beautiful ribbon, which was the inspiration for the projects and the coloring, and we're going to do 10 inch pieces. We're going to do nine of the Santas and dovetail them. We're going to do nine of the Dollar Tree ribbon and dovetail them. And then I have a red one that I got too from the thrift store and dovetail those. We're going to, last minute, I decided to use this because I hadn't used it yet. I'm cutting these into 10 inch pieces and rolling them up. You can see the little pink clip. That's where I just rolled it up like a little burrito and clamped it off over there. And they'll go on top of our little bundles. So let's start our ribbon bundles now. I'm going to use my widest on the bottom then the next one and then right over the top I'm going to use my beautiful Santa ribbon. I'm going to take one of these little rolls and put it right in the center and then I'm going to bunch these toward the center. I'm going to pinch them and press them toward the center. And there we have our ribbon bundle. I'm starting in the top. I'm going right up here to those pipe cleaners and wrap it around. Very pretty. Now I use 10 inch pieces. You are certainly welcome to use 12 inch pieces of ribbon strips if you would like. They will stand out more because these, um, because they're 10 inches, they will kind of fall down into the, the arrangement itself. They will kind of be pushed in. You can still definitely see them. You'll see that in the end. Um, you can definitely see them, but if you like more of your ribbon to show, do a couple of more inches on each little strip and you'll get a bigger punch of your ribbons. So you can see here I'm pressing it down and don't worry about smashing your loops and all of that because every bit of this is wired ribbon and it can be pulled right back up and deco mesh is very forgiving. You can push that around and tuck it under. You, you really have a lot of um, leeway with that. Back to the center can see here we're gonna cross them over add that little roll straight onto the top I couldn't think of a thing in the world to make with that little snowy looking red stuff have y'all used it have you used any of that I think it looks great in a ribbon bundle like this but I really don't know what else I would use it for so I did use um, all of it in this project so that's good I didn't waste any money and that always makes me feel better at the end of a project so we're going to continue along until they're all done and then this is what it will look like when you get all of your bundles in and then you just want to be sure that you go up and fluff all of those out make sure that none of your corners are folded over or squished you want a good representation of each color follow me on my social media love to see you there so that's what I'm doing here, just moving them all out, moving my little rolls around, and then tuck down all of your little pipe cleaners. Press them back down into the frame like I'm doing here, or you can cut them off, whichever one you prefer to do. I found it's easier just to leave them there and tuck them in the back in case I want to go back, you know, as an afterthought and add something to it. I still have it there. Those look so nice and the colors are so pretty together and there you go you just flip things out press them under pretty easy to do okay so I have widened up the view a bit so you can see it a little bit better and we're gonna start by adding our little ornaments and I put Santa at the top and off to the side I'm gonna add my little trees in here I do pull the bottoms off of those trees before I glue them down. I've cut a little hole in the back of Santa's hat behind the seam and put a pipe cleaner through it so that I can attach him to this piece. I'm going to put some hot glue on the little trees and just tuck those in here and there. 
you can use whatever type of ornaments you have but I tried to find things that were vintage looking so that they would fit into the total aesthetic of this piece and these are a little faded in spots they're scratched in spots um, they are glass and I just I thought they were pretty I love the shape of them in this arrangement what do you think it's not your typical round ornaments so I like that they're different and they almost look like the little bulbs for the Christmas lights which is nice also a vintage thing the little shapes of the lights like that so I'm just poking them here and there I didn't have very many of them and I'm just trying to make sure that I have them kind of spaced out there where they should be where you can see them well I'm gonna add my little boots in here just a little bit on the bottom a little on the side I do all of my wreaths and my swags laying down. A lot of people use a stand to hold them up. I just don't have one at this point, and that's why I don't do mine standing up. But, but when I do find one, because I'm going to get it thrifted, uh, of course, if I find one, then I'll start doing my videos for you where you can see me put them on standing up. That may be more helpful. Now, this beautiful ribbon, this is the only piece I had. I got it at the thrift store. Uh, loved it, so I decided I'm going to cut it in half to really stretch it. So I'm just going to roll it over in four inch pieces, like a four inch flip flop over there, and then I'm going to have two pieces on each side, and I'm going to pinch it in the middle. This is not going to be the kind of bow that requires a lot of wire to hold it. It's going to be fine with one piece of wire down one side. And you'll see that when I get to the uh, the end of the bow. It looks just fine. It works just fine. And if it wouldn't have worked when I tried to fluff it out, I would have just gone back and tried something else. Because I didn't use any glue on the bow, I could do that. I'm going to do this with the red. And unfortunately, my Santa did not have very much, so I had to work with just a tiny piece and I had to use a different bow on the top. The next time I'll buy two rolls when I find a ribbon I really like. So this is all I had so I'm just going to make a different type of bow just so I can use it in this project because I really really enjoy looking at this ribbon. It's so cheery and bright and vintage. So I'm adding that on top and you can mix your bows too. I'm going to cut off what we don't need and um, start fluffing and I'll start fluffing on the bottom and pull those sections out just on the bottom first and then I work my way upward so that's enough you know that will stand out there on its own with just the two pieces of wire and, and I'm glad of that it worked out you never know crafting is experiment partly you just don't always know I'm gonna dovetail the ends off the Santa ribbon there And you can make a bigger bow. If you have more ribbon, you can make a bigger bow to go on your swag, whatever you choose to do. But I like this one. I think it's cute. Now we're going to use the other half of that ribbon as a tail. So we're going to dovetail it, and I'm going to cut a piece of that red also. It's going to be shorter, and I'm going to dovetail that. Pipe cleaner in the middle is going to hold it together. And then I'm going to add some glue on the back of the bow and I want to leave my pipe cleaners out because that's how we're going to put it on the, the wreath. I'm going to work down into a spot where I want it to be and then add that bow. Then I'm going to take the tails and kind of pull them over like they have a just kind of giving them a little life, a little movement. Um, like they're going in and out of the fabric that's here. And I like that. I think that's cute. Gives a little interest. You can do that with your bow tails. Fix it however you like. Santa's beard is totally unruly. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of let the red ribbon do its thing over there. And then we're going to add this little mouse right to the top. Little sweet mouse. Okay, so now we're going to do a vintage wreath. Now it's vintage inspired because I've never seen a wreath like this before. I'm going to use two embroidery hoops here and a napkin 
that came from the thrift store, obviously, with beautiful poinsettias. We're using a 12 inch and an eight inch for this project. We're also gonna use some greenery that you haven't seen yet. So I'm gonna lay it on top of here so I can get plenty of that pattern. I'm just trying to get it centered. And then I'm gonna press the top on, screw it down. And when you flip it over, you can pull it a little bit to make sure that it's good and flat. It's very forgiving. And then I'm gonna leave, leave about an inch so that I can fold and tuck on the inside and give it a nice clean edge. So I'm just leaving it like this, cutting all the way around in about a one inch border. I'm gonna protect all of my fingers that may be touching this and I'm gonna put glue around the inside and fold it and tuck it just like that. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm adding a line of glue and then folding over with my fingers and pressing this down into that glue line. I don't want to get any glue on the back of the napkin itself. I just don't want to have globs and stuff showing through. I'm just trying to keep it neat. And so you want to do this all the way around. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, I would love, love, love to have you here. I have a lot of fun. We always communicate in the comments section. And I am doing a countdown to 10,000 subscribers over on my Instagram. So be sure you follow me there. Okay, so you saw how we did that. Now I'm going to find how I want to place it. And then I'm going to add some hot glue to place it down. I'm kind of smearing that glue around so it will get a lot of coverage there. Then I'm going to flip it over. And to give it a little more support, I'm going to take one of these coffee stir sticks that I have in a big pack. And I think, I, I think you know where I got it from. Goodwill. Anyway, we're going to add some glue and we're going to put the pick on the back. Sometimes I say thrift store and Goodwill so much that I almost forget when I'm going to say where something came from. I almost forget where it came from. It's weird. Mine does strange things. So here are some old picks that I got, you know where from. I'm gonna be cutting into dissections. It looks like it originally came from Joann's, but the tag looks pretty old. Beautiful, it's just lightly frosted on the ends, um, just the way it would be in nature. Frosted on the ends that would be up toward the sky and then the layers underneath do not have as much on them, they're more green. And I love that look, I think it's very pretty. So this is given a little twist on vintage with adding some rustic to it. I'm going to use just my little wire on the paddle here and just twist these pieces, overlapping them so that the, the uh, greenery is on top of the one that is right before it. And then you can go back and add more pieces of wire where you need to. You can add a little hot glue where you need to just to make sure that your pieces stay down. I'm gonna tuck in a few extra pieces here and there where I feel like it needs it. So there's one piece. And then there are a couple other spots that look like they could use a little extra help. I don't want any wire or any pieces to show underneath there. Now this one I'm just gonna cross over so it's pointing in the opposite direction. I have a piece of mistletoe and I am going to pull this off of its little plastic piece and add it here and there. There's mistletoe in that pretty little napkin. There's also holly, but can you believe with all that I have thrifted, I have never thrifted a piece of holly. No holly and no holly berries. And I definitely need to get some. But you know, it's almost clearance time. We'll be getting all this stuff after the holidays. So to make my bow, I'm going to use the rest of that napkin and cut it into strips right over where the decorative pieces are. And then I'm going to make a little messy bow. So you just make an X for a messy bow. I'm just trying to decide what I want to go where. Crisscross them just like that. And I have a little piece of metallic cording, but you can use anything you want for this. Jute or a piece of wire, whatever you want. I'm going to tie it tightly. Then I'm gonna pinch it in the middle, kind of like you would with the tassel to make sure that both sides are equal. I'm gonna trim it off. You don't have to be precise with this. It's a messy bow for a reason. I want it to be messy. I want little pieces of thread coming off 
I like it. I think it's pretty. Again, it makes it a little more rustic, which makes it fit better into my own home decor. So there we go. And I'm going to put it right on top of this, right where that little screw is. And then you can add hot glue if you want to, or you can just cut it off like this. And if you cut the little pieces of ribbon short enough, they'll kind of, you know, stay where they need to stay because they're fairly light. Then you make any type of hanger that you want to put on the back and glue it down. So these are our projects. Here is our framed Santa, and he is from a bag. So we recycled a Michael's shopping bag for that. And then we have lots of thrifted items and Dollar Tree items right there on our beautiful swag. Love the colors. Love, love the colors. And then over here, we have that pretty rustic doubled wreath. And I think it looks nice. What do you think of these projects? They're all vintage inspired. Which one would be your favorite? I have had so much fun doing all these Christmas projects and having so much commentary with you guys. I love talking to you guys and hearing your ideas. You always give me good ideas and options. I want to thank all of my subscribers who have been here from the beginning. If you're new here, I am so happy to have you. You should feel welcome. I have really great YouTube family here to welcome you with open arms. Okay, so to start off, I have four projects. The first one, I'm showing you a bunch of vintage ribbons I have to choose from. And I get these from Goodwill. And here is some more. I've got some ornaments of different sizes and shapes and some little jewels and snowflakes, a variety of papers and embellishments, just things that I thought may fit along with a Victorian inspired, um, you know, Christmas theme. So here's some paper too that I have, tissue paper. And then I have this little box that had ornaments in it. Decided to use it. We're gonna need some Jenga blocks. And I'm gonna start off by taking my wood tent and I'm going to color this entire thing in this dark color. I know that with the Victorian theme, lots of things in their home, they decorated with dark colors. So they would have had at Christmas time more uh, burgundies and maroons and um, dark green jewel tones and dark wood. So I decided that this would be good for what we're going to be doing. After you put this tent on, you just go and wipe it off. And that's what I'm doing here. And then, of course, you're going to need to let it dry before you do anything else with it. I just put mine in front of a fan until it's completely dry. I also did some little feet, and you'll see that in a minute. So here's this beautiful paper. I have used this on another project. And I'm just going to go through and cut out the little images that I think would be cute. Go into this paper. I'm going to cut out some images from here, too. And then I'm going to take this ornament apart and just save the top part to use in the project because I don't think the font will fit. So here's the little feet and they're almost like little pots. I'm going to use some hot glue and put these on the bottom. This is going to be like a stand-in curio, I think is what we could probably call it. It's almost like a Christmas card that is 3D. I was looking this up and I saw some things on Pinterest, um, some Tim Holtz things, and his are amazing. You should go to Pinterest and check those out if you're interested in doing this type of a style. So I'm just going to take some pieces of paper and I've cut them down to the right size. You know, just use your ruler and measure it down and then get your glue stick, put it in there and it'll hold this perfectly and you won't have any mess on your papers. The tissue is thin, so be very careful with that and just kind of, I'm doing this in fast motion because I always do way too much video, but I'm being very gentle with the tissue paper parts. So I've got the cute little girls in the top and the cute little girl in the bottom, just kind of near each other. 
And I didn't start off with the with the theme of having this like a child's kind of project, but I think it kind of turned out that way, like a, a children themed little thing. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, again, with cutting down your paper and getting everything, you see how dark that green is? It's just really pretty. I kind of went by the colors also that were in the tissue paper. And um, that's how I helped, you know, kind of get an idea of what I wanted to go there. And I've also used a doily here. This is just a paper doily and I cut it down, just a little piece of it. You can use ribbons or pieces of fabric, anything you like. I went ahead and used this pick and just cut it into pieces and I'm gonna add a little like a Christmas tree in there. This is three dimensional, so you want some things that are flat, you want some things that kind of stand out, but I didn't want anything to be wider than the actual box itself, which kind of limits you to what you can put in there. You can also consider little miniature Christmas ornaments, you can do buttons, you know, whatever you like. So I'm just going to place these here and there until I get the look that I like. I used to be a scrapbooker, so I really enjoyed that, mixing patterns and, and you know, pictures and just really giving dimension to things. And I do try to include that in my projects that I do as well. I thought that the font was okay for these two um, Christmas signs that I'm adding. And then the little one in the bottom also, you can't really see that one that well. But um, I think that the pictures in the font suit the style. I'm just going to take this gold eucalyptus pick and just cut it into pieces. And I'll be using the pieces for other parts in the project and uh, later on in the other projects. So I just want to add to this jewel here. I'm going to take these, and these are plastic pretty much, and um, put some hot glue on the back and then put them on the back of this little jewel. And I am not sure where I got this from. Probably Goodwill, but it could have been something that my daughter had. I don't know. I think I want to add this one on the outside to give a little more dimension but first we need to place the jewel down and then I'm gonna add a little more you gotta have a little sparkle when you're doing uh, Victorian type or old-fashioned uh, I wouldn't call it retro I, I kind of think of the 50s 40s and 50s when I think of retro but old-fashioned or Victorian Christmas, I think of these types of things where they use jewels, they use things that they had for their decorations, and they use natural greenery, and I think my little greenery choices look pretty close to uh, being realistic. So I'm just going to take that piece, fold it up, make it look like it's intended to be that way, put it there. I've chosen this red and gold for the trim. I'm going to put a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom, so I'm just going to cut those down. If they fray too much, you can use a little hot glue and, you know, put those where they will stay. Or a piece of tape on the back will probably do it too, some clear tape. And I'm just going to go right on the edge. And I decided to flip this one upward because I want to do something special on the top. So this little bicycle ornament, look how cute this is. I want to put it on the top. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that this style of bicycle was around in the Victorian era. I know I've seen pictures of things that are similar to this, so I think that it looks really good with this. And it's red, it matches, and we've got the little children that are featured inside the box, so I think this would be cute right on top. So once the glue is dried, I'm going to take some of that gold ribbon and just tie a little bow because we want this to look like a Christmas present. Or a Christmas wish right on top of the box so we're just gonna make the little simple bow to go on the top and try to get it small so it doesn't look overly out of proportion and I'm just gonna glue it down right here on close to the handlebars and then I'm gonna continue along with some Dollar Tree table scatter just like that All right, this is something that came off of the tree, um, not the tree, the bicycle. It's a uh, little holly leaves and I decided to add those back in there. I think they look really good. They're miniature, they're cute. You could do a little gift in there if you wanted. 
Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, on to the next project. I have got some of this tinsel that came off of a Dollar Tree something. I got some beads. I got some vintage uh, trim. I've got a little bead ball. And we're going to use the same greener that we used on the other project. And this is the Christmas card. Little Santa card. And this is a tart pan. This came from Goodwill. I found two of them. Can't wait to use the other one. So I'm just going to cut it apart. Trim off the little hanger part just so that it is almost looks like it's supposed to be round. I don't want to leave a flat spot on there. Make it look nice. And then I'm going to cut down a length of my ribbon or my ruffle trim, whatever you want to call it. And this is white and gold. So one project that I'm going to do is going to be like completely silver and white. And then this one is going to be more of a gold thing. Just in case you like the gold more. So I'm just going around with the hot glue and because this is a metal pan you got to work quick or the glue will cool off too fast and you won't get any grip on your fabric. So I'm going to go around like this just using my silicone protectors on my fingers to push it into the corners so that it somewhat keeps the shape or follows the shape of that star. Just like that. So a quick question while this is going on. Did any of you guys have parents or grandparents that decorated a tree in this style? This is not something that you really see anymore, um, except on Pinterest. I don't see other people doing this style. So I'm just wondering, do you remember this? What are your memories of Christmases when you were a child? Because I think this is really cool. You know, the silver and the gold and it's a little too much for my rustic taste, but doing the projects is so much fun. There's so many layers to it. It's just some, it's a type of richness, I guess, that I feel doing these projects. Plush, just, I love it. So we got metal, we got ribbon, we've got this, this tinsel wrap that I pulled off. I think it was a Dollar Tree stocking ornament, but I saved it. So going around here, I'm just getting the right amount to go around that uh, circular card. And then I'm going to start wrapping it almost like a wreath just to bulk it up a little bit. And I'm just going to cut some more pieces and go around until I get it as thick as I, I think I want it. And making sure that all those ends are tucked under so that you don't have any little pieces sticking out. You want this to have a, a nice finished look. So just press them into the form. And then we'll be placing it right down on top. Just going to add the hot glue. You can use a cool temperature glue if you would like on these projects because you're going to be touching a lot and a lot of small things. You do not want to burn yourself. So I'm going to put a glop of glue down there and put this little bead. I don't know what this is like a beaded ball. I think it was on a uh, Mardi Gras necklace maybe. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit greener, greenery in there. And then again, on the other side. And I know that I want to put a bow on the top of the star. I found with doing these types of projects, if you think you've gone too far, just take it one more step and then you can quit, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna put this right on the top just to add a little more gold to it. And you know, you could, if you have a star that you want to use, you could spray paint it. You could do whatever you would like. Um, but since I'm using hot glue in here, I can always take this apart and use this project for this tart pan for another project. And I like that. I like that about hot glue. As long as it's not Gorilla Glue, because that stuff is permanent. Okay, so I'm going to make a little rosette now. I'm going to take some of that same red ribbon that we used before. I'm going to place it in the middle of the button just the red part, leaving that gold trim for the top. Now I'm gonna turn, make a little gather, and add a little more glue each time. You don't wanna use too much glue because your bow will be too bulky. It'll get really tall instead of wide, and we don't want that to happen. We don't want it to look like a pine cone, in other words. We want it to look like a flower. And we wanna have enough room that I can drop a bead down in the middle of there, so the size of my finger with that protector is the perfect size, plus, 
being able to get my finger on the inside like that helps me to press it down and hold it in place until the glue does its job. So here's our little rosette. I'm just pinching it down really hard to make sure it doesn't come undone. And then there, drop a little pearl right in the middle of it. Look at that beautiful little flower. I'm gonna put some hot glue back there and put it right there. I think it's cute. What do you think about that little flower? You can do that with any type of like a curved um, trim. You can do that. So I'm adding some more leaves there. And then I'm gonna tack down my ribbon on the sides just a little bit. Both sides, straightening out the ribbon. It's not wired, so it's kind of floppy. And then I'm just gonna cut the ends off in a slant. All right, we're gonna make a hanger out of that same tinsel. If I would have had like a gray tinsel, I would have used that one instead, like a silverish gray. But this is what I had, it was white, and then I had some red, but I thought this one looked better. Smoke and hot glue. And then I'm gonna add just a little piece of ribbon over the top just to hold it in place. All right, and I decided I wanted to add some candy on there. So I've cut apart a pick that I already had with little pieces of candy and I put a peppermint, a little, looks like a, a gum gumball maybe, and then a little package candy and one pearl right there. And I'm gonna add another pearl over here. And there it is. What do you think about number two? On to number three. I have some vintage little pie, whatever these are, jello molds, a little tree, I've got some paint and a brush, I've got some salt and magic snow mix, some tinsel, some wraps, a snowflake, a little piece of the fabric cotton, and then some pom-poms, and I'm also gonna use some table scatter, like we had before. I'm gonna start off by emptying this into a pan and getting my paint and i'm going to take this stiff brush it's like a stencil brush and i'm going to put this all down over the branches of this tree doing it with this type of brush is going to the little needles from the tree poke straight up into there and you get a lot better coverage you're going to save yourself a ton of time plus you get all the way down to the base of the tree while it is still wet you want to take your Whatever you want to use, if you want to use just faux snow, you can do that. But I like to mix part salt and part um, faux snow together to get this look. Plus, it gives it a little sparkle. And then, there you go. After it dries, you're going to spray a little clear Mod Podge on it. And that's going to help keep it from falling off. Let it dry. Now, we're going to stack these two. Make a little stand. Or a little base. I have some more that are smaller. And I, for the love of, I don't know, I can't find them. I don't know where they're at. Probably in the Valentine stuff, because I do a lot of Victorian at Valentine's. All right, while the glue is still wet here, I'm going to take some of that same mixture and go around the joint in the middle. Just like that. Why, you may ask, because in the beginning, I thought I was going to leave it that way, but I do change it. So I'm going to take some of this fabric, snow, whatever this stuff is, batting. You can use pillow fluff. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to stick it down into here. I'm going to use some hot glue and then press it down so that it is pretty much level with the top. Then I'm going to be sure you're in a ventilated area when you do this now. I have the door open and a fan on. Don't worry. And you're just going to pack this onto here. It's going to be like an adhesive. It's a sealer, but it's also an adhesive. And it works really well for this because the hot glue is not going to give you even coverage. You'll have little streaks and roads. And this will give you a nice the ability to make an even coverage. So give that a minute, let it dry, and then I'm gonna add a little border around the top. So I'm using this silver tinsel, which I guess I could have used the silver tinsel around that Santa Claus ornament too. Hindsight, right? Okay, so I'm making a little border on the top. Just tack it down with a little bit of hot glue, a couple of spots all the way around it, and it'll stay. And see, I just add a little and then just press it down. And there you go. So now we got to put the tree down in the base. We're going to decorate it first, apparently. We're going to take some white pom poms, and this is from a bag I think I got at Dollar Tree, I think is what it said. And I'm just going to add some white, the smallest ones, straight into the tree. They will stay if you just poke them in there. 
just like that. You can leave it like that if you would like and just have the white or because it's Victorian, I'm going to add a little something to it. Let's go ahead and secure the tree down into the base. So I'm just making a little hole, like a little nest right there with my fingers so that I can put the tree right down in it. I left the base on the tree because that's going to help it be a little more stable down in that snow. I have a stray snowball and we'll leave it. We're going to go with it. So in order to not burn myself, I'm using my tiny jewelry pliers. I'm going to put my little silver scatter here, put a drop of hot glue on it and just press it into the tree here and there all over. When you're finished, this is the look. Now I'm just going to add a, the bigger, a few of the little bigger snowball looking things in the bottom, the little pom poms. And so far, this is what we have. But you know, with these types of decorations, you're going to have to add a little bit more. Like I said, when you think you've gone far enough, add in a little bit more. So I'm going to add this around the middle because I want to add the star and that star would not have stuck on there without it. So that's why I wrapped it in the middle. And this is what we have so far. And I just put a little one of those um, table scatters right in the center. All right, I'm going to show you how to make a tiny star. We're going to use a piece of this pipe cleaner. I called it tinsel, I think. And you're going to do it, you're going to bend it just like you would when you draw a star. So simple. Then I'm pinching it with my fingers until I get it in the shape that it needs to be. And then I'm going to put some glue on the bottom part so that the point is upward and glue it to the tree. So this one's all silver. Silver and white. You could add gold if you wanted. Okay, so on to the next one. We're going to use this beautiful little sign that I got from a thrift store. This is a little, I don't know, it's a little wooden piece that I got. It looks like a, a headboard for a bed or something. If you don't have that, you can use a piece of thin wood like the size of a ruler and some of these little clothespins and make your own. There you go. See that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of this old ribbon that I have and again with the pick, I have this beautiful little dove. I believe it's a dove. And we're going to have some table scatter as well. I'm going to start off by covering up the bottom where it says tulip soap because the ribbon that I'm going to use is somewhat sheer and I don't want those words to show through there. So I'm just going along the natural border underneath her little her little muffler, her coat, and just going along the bottom. And then after it's dry, I'm going to overlay it with two different ribbons. This one is a little sheer. It looks a little more opaque, but uh, I assure you that it is fairly sheer. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. It's going to cover up that whole bottom section. And then, just like that, trim off anything that you need to trim off. And then I'm looking at what I want to do with this ribbon because I, I like the imprint or the embossing on the edge of this. So I know I want to use it in the project, but it's too big. So I'm going to put it on my on my mat and use my little rotary cutter and just go right up the middle cutting it in half. Now when I do that, I still get that border and the sheer part just overlays it, just gives it a little something extra and I like it. We're going to glue that on and then for the top, I don't have as much room up there so I'm just going to cut the rest of the ribbon part off, keep the trim, and we're going to add that metal trim up on the top. And it is like a like a metal. I, I don't know how to actually explain it, but it, it is sort of like a metal. So now we have the top. Now I'm just holding it in the place that I know it's going to be in the middle of my little frame there. And then pushing it right back down, standing it up to make sure that it's going to be able to stand on the bottom. To give a little more support, you can use these little jingle blocks or these tower blocks that come from Dollar Tree. And in order to get mine to stand up correctly, I'm just going to stand it up and put the blocks on that way. So I know it's balanced. All right, so we're gonna go to these little fence posts because that's what they look like now and add some greenery. What a beautiful little girl. Isn't that a pretty image? She's so pretty, those little chubby pink cheeks. It's just a beautiful picture. 
All right, so don't be afraid to cut down your picks and your florals. You can cut them down. It came from the Dollar Tree. You can really stretch your dollar by getting the pieces that you want by just kind of working on them on your own. So there we go. Now I know on the top, I want that little bird to be up there, but she needs something to sit on so she's not just looking strange up there. So we're going to put her on a nest. Look at that. I love this piece. I should have been protecting my fingers, but I was just trying to be careful. So you be super careful and use your protectors where you need to. Okay, so we're gonna add here and there and here and there. Y'all be sure to check out the links in the description box and go check out everybody's video. These are a great bunch of women. I've known them for a while now. They're super sweet, super talented. And I know that they would love for you to go over there and check them out. And if you're coming from my channel to see them, please tell them that Brandy sent you. And you'll be doing me and the world a big favor. Now I'm going to make a bow with this little metal stuff. I wasn't sure where I was going at first. I didn't know for sure if it would work, but it worked. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just like my goal to get to 10,000 subscribers. If there's a will, there is a way. I'm going to do it, and I'd love for you to be part of it by subscribing to this channel and following the journey. All right, so I'm just twisting this in the middle with some floral wire. Then I'm going to very carefully pull out the middles of those ribbons. It's kind of hard to do because it's super small, but it works. You could always use tweezers or some pliers to help you with that if you needed to, or you could do something on a larger scale, depending on your picture, what you want to put. Something I've noticed about this style of decoration is that they do a lot of 3D on the people themselves. So, you know, like you'll, the little hat will be 3D or it'll be a photograph of a face, but then the body is dimensional. So I thought, well, why don't we do that with her and just give her a bow that stands out in her picture? And I think this worked really well. So I'm just gonna cut one of those little table scatter um, balls in half and then put it right in the center. It's gonna cover up that wire and it's gonna give a little more adornment to her beautiful little bow. Would you have used the metal? Would you have thought to cut down a ribbon like that to just dissect it and use it in different parts? Gotta stretch your imagination a little bit. Look at all those elements and see what would work best for you and what you really like. And kind of test yourself, push your limits. Love it. So you a gold person or silver person? I'm on the fence. I think I'm on the fence. It depends on what we're talking about, I believe. I'm so glad that you stopped by and that you've taken the time, 25 minutes of your life, to watch my video. It means again, the world thank to you me. for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.